Hello and welcome connoisseurs of fine common cardboard. Good evening or good morning, depending on where in the world you are. So glad to have you here today. And uh, we're going to fire things off and get started. Uh, looks like we've got a couple of you here who have already arrived early. Thank you so much. And I'm um, just super excited to do this build today, which will be a little bit um, be an interesting experiment because we're going to be having you decide which deck I build. And you may have seen it in the description at the beginning of the video, but hidden in there was actually the list of commanders we're going to be picking from because it isn't a free for all. There are three commanders that I'm really excited to build and they're listed right here on the screen. We have a couple of people in chat. Chris Lively, we here, let's brew. Chris, you're a hero. You are always here. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for coming and joining us. We have uh, FP Anhan. Hey, Papa. Good to see you, my friend. Glad to have you here. And we have Christopher Amador. Hello to you too, sir. So glad to have you all here. The vibe is high. The stoke is real. And uh, we're going to get to it. How's everybody doing today? Everybody keeping their head above water? Living their best life? Drinking lots of water, I hope. Mm. Doing swell. That is what we like to hear. So while we're kind of waiting for folks to come uh, and land in the server, once once we or in the in the video, once we have a certain threshold of people here, we are going to have everyone vote on one of three bro commanders. Um, from the Brothers War. One of them is not a bro, one of them is a bro, and one of them is a spider. <laughs> so um, we'll be picking between Yoshin Tactician. And for those of you who don't know this one, it is just a lord in Azorius, four soldiers. Soldiers are actually pretty good in uh, in, at common, we have a lot of relevant action for soldiers, and we also have a lot of payoffs for tribal stuff. Um, so this one's kind of interesting to me. Christopher says, watch it, spiders are my bro. <laughs> hey, you know, spiders can be your bro too. Um, I just don't know whether the spider identifies as a bro or not. They could, they could. Maybe they establish as a dudette. Maybe that's what their preference is. So yeah, Yoshin Tactician has promise here. Uh, I really like the idea of like an aggro vented mid-range deck that can apply a lot of pressure. Um, it's making its soldiers bigger um, while also having a small package of counter spells perhaps um, to not die to combo um, while also applying a lot of pressure. And then blue is granting us some really powerful stuff. Um, I think that blue is gonna give us distant melody, which is three and a blue to draw cards equal to the number of a creature of your chosen type um, could just be a huge refill spell. Um, we get to play of one mind, which is two in a blue sorcery, draw two cards, but if you control a human and a non-human, um, you can uh, draw two for one. Um, so uh, there's gonna be humans in here. I don't know about non-humans, we'll have to see whether that works. But uh, basically the idea is just to have like, these soldiers that have card advantage stapled onto them, getting buffed by the ocean tactician and then clapping. So pretty stoked on that. Um, our other option here is going to be third path iconoclast. And this one perhaps needs less introduction. I'm sure many of you have just had like rock hard boner for this. Um, this card is phenomenal. It's an upgrade on young pyromancer in a lot of ways. We're making artifact creature tokens on non-creature spells in is it so in 60 card formats this might be more of a limitation because of the color requirements and maybe a person would choose not to play this but the 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 broadness of this is what really appeals to me and you can see i've already been working on this one here what i'm going to need help with is winnowing it down if we do choose this one because there's a lot of different approaches we can take with the iconoclast um, this can be built as an aggro deck it can be built as a mid-range deck. It can be built as a hard control deck. Um, those of you might not know um, that I'm known for building Murmuring Mystic for CPDH and popularizing that. I've got 
probably like a hundred or more games in with um, with Murmuring Mystic. And this has a lot of the things that Murmuring Mystic has on it too. Um, the parts of it it loses is flying. That's the main one. The second thing is that it's a 2-1 instead of a 1-5. So Murmuring Mystic doesn't really die to a lot. It doesn't die to the sweepers for the most part. The birds don't die to Swirling Sandstorm. Um, you're also getting access to Airborne Aid, which is a really weird card, but I will pull it up for you here. Um, Airborne Aid is essentially Distant Melody, but it's drawing for all the birds in play. So this one is reading all the birds in play. So sometimes you get some added benefit from cards like uh, Cruel Witness or Eric Crocker and Sneak or um, the uh, the blue tutor spell that they use in Tatiova called uh, Shoreline Ranger. So sometimes you get some benefits there, but this oftentimes resolves and you draw like 11 cards. It's crazy. So you do lose that. But what we gain with Iconoclast is pretty significant. It's really cheap. It's in Is It. It makes artifacts and it's off of non-creature spells. There's just a lot to be said here. It's also a human in the command zone, which like I was discussing before, gives us certain benefits with like of one mind, having a human that produces non-humans is like very easy slam dunk. Um, so very cool uh, card, very excited about this. The third option, the third option I am equally excited for and that is Skyfisher Spider. What a house. We are about to take Golgari and send it into the stratosphere because this might be my new favorite Golgari deck. I also popularized Witherbloom Apprentice in CPDH and um, this deck is really different from Witherbloom Apprentice. There's very few crossovers here except for the staple black removal, some draw spells, um, maybe some of the ramp, but like the deck construction is gonna be totally different. And what really drew me to this card is destroy target non-land permanent. I was building Ravenous Chupacabra for a while, which is two colorless, two black, ETB, destroy a creature outright, it's a 2-2. Two -two. And I really liked it because there's certain things you can do to reuse that effect. Undying Evil for one, Village Rights for two, draw two cards, comes back in, kills something, all at instant speed. And you're getting this repeatable removal effect. It's also in mono black, which is one of the better colors to be mono um, in because it has such amazing coverage. You can discard cards, you can reuse your creature cards, you can kill things, you can edict creatures that are hard to kill, you can sweep creatures that are small, lots of them. You can also sweep creatures that are hard to kill um, and you draw cards, it's just like gross. And then you also, if you play enough mana rocks and you also just happen to get cranial plating. So mono black is great, however, this card is better. This is a better card. It's not only a 3-3 with reach, and remember reach is hyper relevant. In this meta with uh, initiative and with monarch, flying creatures are phenomenal. And being able to block them with this creature, knowing that it's going to allow us to reuse our removal spell is so good. It means that people may not actually come after us if they don't want us to be redeploying our Skyfisher Spider, destroying another important permanent of theirs, they may not come after us for it. Um, Non-land permanent, I mean, this is hitting Righteous Aura, Pestilence, it's hitting a Protective Sphere, it's hitting, you know, maybe like Helm of the Gas Lord, it's hitting Ophidian Eye, it's hitting just an innumerable number of different things. It hits Tortex. Like this, this deck is going to grind like a motherfucker. And I'll tell you what, the flavor text is hyper relevant. I have been playing a lot of Passageway Seer lately, which is a three and a black for a two, two creature uh, that gains you the initiative when it enters the battlefield. It has lifelink attached to it. And at the beginning of your end step, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it if you have the initiative. And being in black and having access to life gain is really hard to, to understate, like overstate. Like you, it is so good to have life gain in these decks that really wanna grind and really wanna push for a mid to late game, they can insulate their life total. So the fact that this is not only like prevent, you know, providing that disincentive to killing it, which I can just leave it up for blocks and people might not come after me, but also when it's dying, then I'm just happening to gain life for all the creature cards in my graveyard and then it exiles itself, whatever. It, uh, you know, it, it just 
goes into your command zone. Um, so a lot of really cool things here. Um, you can even like, it's a choice, it's a May ability. So when it dies, you don't necessarily have to gain life if you don't want to, if you're doing the undying evil thing. So anyways, very excited about this um, and really, really pumped to bring this to CPDH. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna be playing a shitload of Skyfisher Spider and a shitload of Iconoclast and the Yoshin Tactician may just turn out to be a sleeper. So um, we've been in chat for a little bit here. We've only got a couple of people, but I am gonna start the poll up and let you all vote uh, on which commander we're building today. All right. And this is a special stream because um, this uh, this sort of, you guys get to choose what we're building uh, is generally in the future gonna be reserved for people who are supporters of the channel in a financial way. So once we hit a thousand subscribers, we're gonna have a YouTube membership integration and folks who are supporting the channel, supporting what we do and helping contribute to this project of really trying to expand um, the broaden the, the horizons of CPDH, but also like deepen our understanding of it and then introduce the world to this amazing format. Um, all of that, we're looking, we're gonna be looking for people who wanna support that mission. And those people, we're gonna hook them up by giving them um, on select uh, games. They'll be uh, basically patron games. And there will also be times where the patrons will get to decide and vote on what our next week's build is from a selected list. So um, that's all gonna be really exciting. Clay and I are so enthusiastic about this project and really stoked to uh, put this information in your hands. So um, while we wait for the votes to come in, I'm gonna kind of let you all um, hang out for a bit here and we can chat. Um, does anybody have any questions? We can do a little uh, Q&A session while we, while we wait here. Um, feel free to um, feel free to drop your questions in chat. Anything you want to know? Any decks you want to look at before we get started? Um, open to answer whatever you're looking for. And of course, uh, for those of you in servers where people might find this kind of content interesting, I would always love it if you take a moment and share that with your friends. Uh, one of the things that I've learned as, uh, as I've gone down this rabbit hole of streaming and content production is that the most single important facet of content creation is that the people that watch your content, A, that they like it, but B, that they share it they get out there and share the content with the world because that really indicates to YouTube and to the algorithms that this is content that uh, that is going to be attractive to people. So always appreciate it when folks do that. Looks like we've got 25% for, so we've got one vote for Third Path, three votes for Skyfisher. Uh, FP Anhan, I'm just gonna call you FP if you don't mind. Um, you guys were doing a meta analysis. What insights you got from there. Yeah, we can take a look at that. Um, and for those of you just joining, make sure to throw a vote in there. Once we get to 10 votes, we're gonna get started. Um, let me pull up our metadata analysis here um, and we can all look at it together. Um, so first and foremost, I will clarify that the, um, that the metadata tracking stuff, it has a certain usefulness to it and I'll talk about what that is. And then there's certain areas where it's best not to take too, um, too much gospel in, in what that is. So let's switch this over. We're gonna switch scenes to, let's do reporting spell table here. We'll go over to metagame analysis. We're gonna get these skulls out of the way. This is to indicate when people have died in the game. So, okay. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, 
The metagame tracking project, just for those of you that don't know what this is, is a project to collate via volunteer, um, volunteer group of people data on the games that are being played in CPDH. This is not an exhaustive list. There's a lot of games that are being played outside of this context. Um, and so, you know, just take that with a grain of salt. But man, we are gathering some amazing uh, depth and breadth of data here um, around a whole bunch of, of different uh, kind of topic markers. Um, so we've got so many different commanders being represented here and people are really going deep with it. So some of the things that we're able to conclude are if we look at, for example, um, we're gonna go to here to uh, play, uh, player commander win percentages. Um, one of the things we can see actually is that we can start to see some of the data surrounding our the number of turns that people are playing um, and how long the games are going. So the first thing that you might notice here is that we have an average turns per game of about 11 and a half turns. Um, and the mode is 10. That number has been going ever downward over time um, from when we started to do it. And we're about two turns lower now than perhaps like three sets ago. We started tracking this um, after the Playing With Power video was released um, with myself, Clay, Elora, and um, there's one other lad and I'm forgetting his name now. He was playing Tatiova, who ended up winning. Um, and that's a great video. If you wanna go and watch some, some great CPDH content, that was a hell of a job by Playing With Power. Um, and uh, back then we were about 13 turns and it's been going down and down and down as the meta has broadened and diversified we are now down to you know approaching that 10, um, you know 10 turns kind of situation there. Um, we also have some data on um, on player seat win rates based on their seat position, and we can see that um, described in this graphic here. We can see that player one is there, there's basically there's a about a three percent delta in win percentage as you go through the seats. So seat one is the most likely to win, seat two, 3% lower, seat four, another two and a half percent lower. And then seat three, you can see there's a plummet off of the cliff for seat three. And we don't fully understand exactly what is going on here that's causing seat three to have such a low win rate. Um, I have some hypotheses, but it's pretty confounding that seat four is is actually a higher win rate than seat three. It could be that seat four, because they're the last player and the slowest to develop, that perhaps there are certain archetypes that are actually favorable to not coming really hot out the gates. If you're, for example, a ghost Tormod player and your goal is to possum really hard and to not present an actual threat, but only just uh, essentially just kind of grinding along, getting your value, solving problems only when they need to be solved, then being in seat four might be better than seat three in some cases, but this is a statistical anomaly. And i um, not sure exactly what it is because we go seat one to seat two, seat two to seat three. This is like a 9% delta. And then it jumps back up another 6% when you get to seat four. Um, I've noticed in CPDH that there is a pattern towards um, towards basically the person who is who is going, uh, you know, who is who goes, who struggles, or maybe they they stumble a little bit earlier on. That in those cases, you're basically um, you're just ignored, right? Like you aren't treated like a, a player at the table who's really, you know, contributing. And so you just don't get interacted with. And sometimes that's gonna cause you to win because you just slip on by. Um, so that's really interesting. Uh, let's take a look back at, uh, so we'll go deck tech here. No, let's see, we're looking recording spell table, yeah. Um, the other things that I think are interesting to look at here that um, you know can provide us some insight onto the metagame is archetype representation. And currently, we have uh, you know, a breakup into four different archetypes and sub-archetypes, control, aggro, mid-range, and Voltron and combo, sorry, five. Um, and so you can see that in terms of like pure representation, mid-range and combo are well-represented. Um, combo at 
28% uh, pure combo at 28%, mid range at 22 and a half. So combo, if we add in all the other stuff is gonna be so, um, no, there's 21, 31, so 32, um, another 32, so 40-ish, 41, uh, let's see, 41, uh, 50, you know, so uh, 45, 45. So yeah, about 45% of the meta is uh, is represented here in some form of combo archetype. That's quite a bit, 45, That that is actually harkens back to um, some of the old numbers that we've gotten about, you know, or, or the, the old meta basically that was mostly combo. Um, we have mid range, which is 22% plus, um, and actually Clay, who I can see has made his way into chat. What's up, dude? Uh, we should uh, make a version of this that also has all of the sub archetypes added up. So like how many total mid range X decks are there? That would be really interesting to look at. So what we have here is uh, 30, so 31, um, 31, so yeah, about 31% of our, uh, of the of the games being played, or sorry, the, the players and the decks that they're choosing are mid-range. So this is all really interesting here, but what's really cool is when we take a look here and we start to compare archetype representation versus win rate. And this is where we start to get some really interesting conclusions, um, which is that combo, uh, let's see, we've got combo, so 0.6, so 24, um, 25, uh, 28, 33, 43, 44, 44% win rate. So actually combo is underperforming in the meta by like five to 6%, whereas something like uh, mid range is actually overperforming for its for its meta representation. You can see pure mid range. Even if you just took pure mid range and none of the sub archetypes, it's performing at 20, uh, 28 percent win rate with a twenty two percent representation in the meta. So that's just interesting to look at. I wouldn't use this ever to determine what is good and what you should play. I think that that would be a mistake in utilizing this data. What I'm excited about with this data tracking stuff. Is, is just simply that it shows how broad the opportunities are in CPDH to play whatever the hell you want. And it's all really good. So uh, as Clay has suggested here, we're gonna go into super hard detail on this. We're gonna do a once monthly meta uh, analysis. So we're not gonna dive too much deeper into this here, but uh, FB, I'm glad that we got to kind of explore this. And, uh, and take a look at what's good there. So um, we're gonna go back to deck tech here. And we've got uh, a pretty heavy majority of players in on Skyfisher Spider uh, at 83%. Even if we were to get four more votes, I don't think it would swing it. So instead of waiting for the 10 votes, we're gonna dive right in to Skyfisher Spider. Y'all knew and I was stoked about this. So yeah, let's let's do it. This is gonna be a joy. Um, as you all can see, um, I have already uh, gone ahead and added, you know, a few cards to here that I think are gonna be, um, that are gonna be, you know, just, just good to consider. Um, so we're gonna work from those first. Let me get a little card image here for that sidebar. And then we'll get started. Have I downloaded it yet? That is the question. This is the question. I have not. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just we'll just leave the card back image there for for the moment. So we're gonna do Skyfisher Spider, and we'll get rolling here. Dave says uh, a few cards. He says looking at 92 card deck. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is like after I've made cuts too. So. Really what we're gonna be doing today is taking all of this stuff here. Hey, thank you very much. Um, we're gonna be taking all of these cards here and we're gonna figure out what is the creme de la creme because we don't even have lands in here yet. Uh, we have a couple of lands, like some slam card, slam dunk. Uh, Dave says 92 card deck with no lands, exactly, with no lands. And I think that chat, 
this is where you all get to do me the great disservice of recommending infinitely good playable cards because we're gonna be in like Mayhem Devil territory here. I think Dave can relate to the pain of building Mayhem Devil. This is gonna be another one. We're gonna have so many good cards for this deck, like already we're stacked. Um, like even if we were to add lands right now, we'd be up to like 36 lands probably. We've already put four of those in, so we'd be like 32. So if you added 32 to this, we're, we're still like, we're already like 25 cards over or something, and we still haven't gotten your recommendations. So let's start with a couple of basics here. This is a mid-range deck, all right? Like you may have another uh, vision for this, and if you do, leave it in chat. Um, I'm open to hearing, you know, other thoughts on this, but this screams mid-range. Removal in the command zone, repeatable removal, uh, and we're not going to run less removal spells just because we have the spider. It just means that we're going to have the flexibility to do it with the spider or with something else. Um, so some classic interactions that I think are really appealing to me here are Village Rites and Feign Death, Undying Evil, Undying Malice. These cards are going to, we're going to cast it on the spider. If that resolves, then we're going to have the ability to Village Rites it, Costly Plunder, Deadly Dispute, we could even go deeper than those if we want to. We're gonna have a lot of fodder, so that's all pretty appealing. The other thing is if somebody just attacks us, we can throw the Skyfisher Spider in front, cast Undying Malice, eat their thing or block it, and then blow something up. It, there's so much flexibility here. Um, along with these draw spells, this is also going to be a disgusting Tortured Existence deck. Tortured Existence has taken the format of CPDH by storm. Hard stop. Tortured Existence has become a really, really fundamental and core part of mid-range and control decks, particularly because we've hit a peak density of cards that allow us to sacrifice all of our opponent's stuff. So we can switch two cards out of our graveyard if we have creatures in our hand and enough creatures in the deck, we can start to swap our creatures out for these mass edict creatures, particularly, um, you know, uh, Flushbag Marauder, Slum Reaper, Chain Devil, Rot Tide Garganta, go down the list. Um, there could be, you know, you could even be playing something um, like Abyssal Gatekeeper. And Abyssal Gatekeeper might actually be really, really good in this deck. Yeah, I've already got it listed here because Abyssal Gatekeeper, we just cast our spider. We sack the Abyssal Gatekeeper. We sack something else. Everybody sacrifices something, and then we blow up the thing that's left. Uh, Tortex is just reoccurring nightmare for CPDH. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm actually not familiar with reoccurring nightmare. Here, let me. Uh, I'm sure that this uh, surprising to some of you. Um, this is an older card. Uh, let's see, Ch -ch 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 -ch. reoccurring nightmare. We're looking for that old border, right? Yeah, Reoccurring Nightmare. Sacrifice a creature, return it to your hand, put target creature from your graveyard into play. Yeah, that's significantly more disgusting. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. It's, you know, this this is actually, you know, our version of that. It's more mana intensive, but it's great. It also can serve as like a form of graveyard protection, you know, if we can recur things back. Also, it gives us this line where if we sacrifice things, we can reuse their ETBs with Tortured Existence. One thing I'm finding already is that um, in my Passageway Seer deck, Corpse Auger deck, using my commander once it's gone to hand, so basically if I send it to the graveyard, you use Tortex to bring it into hand, then I can cast it again, sack it again, put it into the graveyard, switch it out with the creature, cast it again, and you can start to loop these, these, these effects that are really strong. And ETB effects on commanders are particularly good. So in this deck, you could totally see that. And what's somebody gonna do? Like exile your commander out of your graveyard so that you can get it back to the command zone? Just kind of feels bad. So um, very bullish on Tortured Existence. Um, and then the rest of this is gonna be like packed with Golgari good stuff. Um, one of the other concepts for the deck that I have is that I was thinking about instead of what uh, was to play mana, uh, mana creatures, Things like, um, uh, things like, for example, Viridian Emissary. Basically, it's gonna come out early, we can sacrifice it, it's gonna go get us a land. Same thing with Primal Druid. Uh, so we've got ramp effects that are essentially working with our sack outlets. We're not gonna go super hard into sack outlets because I don't want this to be like an Aristocrats deck. I want this to be a mid-range deck 
that can utilize the stuff in play to kill other things that are way higher value than the thing we sacrificed, and then to loop those things with our superior card advantage and eventually just grind out a victory. Um, so cards like uh, Filigree Familiar I've put in here, uh, because when it's dying, it's drawing a card, it's also getting us some life. Fierce Empath could find us you know, a larger creature and then we can sack it and it's like not that big of a deal. Wirewood Herald, tutoring up an elf um, is appealing. Um, I was actually thinking that uh, one of the removal spells that I might run in here is um, Nameless Inversion. Because you can actually find Nameless Inversion off of Wirewood Herald because Nameless Inversion is a tribal changeling spell and Wirewood Herald says look for an elf card, not a specific um, elf creature card. So we can find Nameless Inversion with this. Uh, we could also use it to find Wood Elves. We can find it uh, Monarch with Entourage of Trest. We can find Thin Clade Fugitives if we really just want to close out the game. Uh, we can find Elvish Aberration if we want to just consistently hit our land drops or have like a big mana ramp kind of a thing. Um, there's a lot of different things we can tutor with that. Um, so I'm excited there. Um, yeah, so let's start getting to work on this. Um, let's get our ramp package set first. Because this is a really fundamental, important part of the deck. Okay, so we've already got ramp. Where is ramp? Is it down below? Okay, ramp. So we've got Elvish Visionary. That is not ramp. This is card draw. Uh, we've got Primal Druid Ramp, um, Cultivate. I don't want to go too deep into these ramp when you sacrifice kind of a thing because I don't necessarily know that we want to be leaning super heavily into the spider. I want the spider to be a thing that we can do, but not like a huge part of it. So we're still going to play Cultivate. Farhaven Elf is good. A Signet. I don't think that we're going to play the Mana Rocks here. Um, I think that the Mana Rock, we, we may play like Honored Heirloom and Bonders because we're a mid range deck and we just have tons of mana. Um, but I don't think we want the Signets because we can't actually do anything with those except for Cranial Plating, and this is not really a Cranial Plating deck. It says sacrifice another creature, so we don't really benefit from that. I think that creatures that are going to come in and ramp us are also going to help feed the spider for the sacrifice effect, but it'll also feed the spider in gaining life. So um, I think that those are good. Uh, they're also going to provide fodder for Tortex. So. Cards like Farhaven Elf. Um, I also had Spring Bloom Druid in here, which is doing Harrow on a body. Uh, Lanawar Visionary, which is drawing us a card, ramping us. Um, the Mike, this Underseller Myconid is insanely good in this deck. Like making three bodies, ramping us, very powerful. Wood Elves doing the same thing. So let's go uh, O Enter, type creature, O Search. Um, and we'll just see what comes up here. And we wanted to put it into play, ideally. Um, hmm. So Druid of the Emerald Glo uh, Grove is essentially like Kodama's Reach for one more mana if you roll well. So 50% of the time it's Kodama's Reach with a body that costs one more mana. And a certain portion of the time it's just finding two lands. That might still be good enough. Um, and occasionally you put those cards into play tapped. That's not what we're going to plan for, but that's kind of interesting. Um, Ondu Giant is one that I kind of like, uh, just because the body is actually really big. It's a 2-4. Um, that's a shame that this one is 4 mana. We really are just looking for 3, three CMC stuff. We don't have a ton more options. This one here would work. Yavamaya Granger could work. Um, the Echo is a bit of a shame but I think that that might be worth. Um, Silverglade Elemental is another card that I've been interested in, but being that it's ramp at five mana, that's not as relevant of a number, um, but it's a four, four for five. 
that's like got this upside and you can put it into play untapped. You can also find a forest card. So like gingerbread cabin or the duels. Um, I really like that. So that one's a good one. Uh, we may just not have a ton of this particular effect and I don't want to do the stuff that symmetrically benefits my opponents when I'm playing like a grindy mid-range deck. Um, oh, I just realized that Fertilid says target player searches their library for a basic land card. Huh. It's like a forced shuffle. That's kind of funny. Um, okay, so let's do search. Um, o land. O play. Because we want these to go into play. Um, what did I miss here? Basic land card should... Oh, Battlefield might be the... Yeah, we're gonna do Battlefield, there we go. Play is the old language. Um, okay, so some good ramp spells. Let's sort here by... Oh no, we'll, we'll just go through it, it's fine. Um, Caravan Vigil is pretty situational. Um, got Crop Rotation, which is already in the deck. A crop Rotation is gonna be really good here for finding a variety of different things. Um, probably end up playing Evolving Wilds. Could play Farseek. Greater Tanuki, definitely going in the deck. Uh, Far Wanderings Threshold might not be totally reliable in this deck. So it's kind of just three mana, find a card, put it into play, tapped. Uh, FP says there's some Enchant Land who helps ramp. Yeah, so we could do Enchant Lands that help ramp, although there's a part of me that wants to avoid um, avoid that a little bit. Growth Spasm's great. Search a library for a basic land card, then create a zero one. This card's kind of cool because it's really not one ramp, it's actually two because you get a, 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 a spawn, and then that spawn we can use to either sacrifice to cast bigger spells or we can sacrifice it to the spider. Very cool. Um, Into the North is interesting, although I don't know that we'll reach for this one ultimately. Um, Maestros Theater does not play in this deck. The bolster one. Migratory Great Horn is interesting, just like turning something shitty that we have into a 3-4 while ramping. It's kind of cool. Monvuli Acid Moss is going to go in the deck. Um, there's a lot of land shenanigans happening right now. And this is basically a ramp spell that costs one more mana that has a modal ability to destroy something. Being able to destroy an Opal Palace with this can be game changing. Being able to destroy a Mystic Sanctuary, Opal Palace, you know, uh, you do Tokasha's Dig Site, you can destroy lands that have auras on them. It's, it's a really good thing to have. Um, Omen of the Hunt. Path to the Festival is kind of meh. It really wants to be in a three color deck. Primal Growth is good. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, Primal Growth is amazing. Can you imagine if we go turn, oof, imagine this, we go turn two Primal Druid, turn three Primal Growth. We go from uh, three lands to six. Let's go. I'm down with that. Uh, Reap and Sow, also rather interesting because this is kind of like a second copy of Monvuli Acid Moss. We could play Steve. Yes, Steve. Steve seems great. Steve being actually better than the other ones that find the duels like Into the North and Nature's Lore because we can actually just play this and sacrifice it, right? It's just a body. And we're okay letting the bodies hit the floor. That is just fine. Uh, Terramorphic, we're gonna play. Um, okay, so that's pretty good for ramp. Oh, you know the other one? The other one that I really like too is Croson Tusker. Yeah, Croson Tusker is great. Um, drawing a card, you know, getting a basic. This card with Tortex is really cool too. That's an exciting interaction. Being able to discard it into the graveyard, return it. That's like a loop that could get us a lot of value. So I'm definitely into that. It's not ramping us so much, but it is gonna find us a lot of cards. Um, okay, so let's move some of these ones that are ramp over into ramp. Um, Yavamaya Granger may or may not make it. The echo is a bummer in this case because it's like during our upkeep. 
So, you know, unless we go Granger into Spider, Granger into Spider means that we don't ever have to worry about the Echo, but this is kind of like three mana find a land and then we can like pay the three again to keep it. But I don't know that this is the most efficient thing for us to be doing. So I'm going to throw that into considering. Um, the Druid of the Emerald Gro uh, Grove is interesting as well. Um, this one might just be good enough as a um, as a creature that's finding us our next two lands. Doesn't necessarily need to go into play. And frankly, 15 removal spells is great. Like, or sorry, um, ramp spells. So we could like leave it at this. We might cut the, what was the other card? Farseek, yeah. I don't think we're gonna play Farseek. I don't think we're gonna play Into the North. Um, we're gonna play Growth from the Ashes. That card is nuts. Growth Spasm, Primal Growth, Monvoli Acid Moss. Okay, so now we need to make some cuts. Um, it's possible that Honored Heirloom is not necessary for this deck if we build it right. We have Bajukabog, Crop Rotation, and Rot Reun Reunion. I don't think we need Honored Heirloom. Um, what are the next worst ramp spells that we have? Druid of the Emerald Glo uh, Grove is probably among the worst. Like Farhaven Elf does it for one cheaper, finds only one land, but it puts it into play all the every time. Maybe these ones aren't good. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this chat. Which of these cards here? And I want to get it down to 15, so we need to cut three of them. I just really like the idea of going Primal Druid or Viridian Emissary into, you know, say like a Fleshbag Marauder um, or an Innocent Blood. Um, yeah, what else could we do with that? Or into like a Village Rites Costly Blunder Deadly Dispute. <laughs> Yeah, FP says creatures are better ramp in this deck. Yeah, I think so too. <clears throat> so, Grow from the Ashes is really good. I kind of want to keep this one. Kodama, Harrow, uh, Hero, Cultivate. <clears throat> These ones are slam dunks. I think Druid of the Emerald Gro Grove goes out. <clears throat> I like the idea of Tanuki because it's another thing that we can do with Tortured Existence and it's uncounterable, which shouldn't matter. That's not a big deal, but we can use it to like ramp. So if we got like an early Tortex, we could like ramp this several times and then later on we can bring it back and cast it as like a 6-5 Trample, which I think is really good. So I think the, the cycling is, is like low key pretty powerful. I mean, there is, bon you know, there Boner Ornament and uh, Lantern of Flashing are really good sources of long-term card advantage. So a part of me thinks that it'd be like pretty heretical to cut these ones. This uh, Underseller Myconid is fucking cracked though. So strong. Wood Elves puts a forest card onto the battlefield untapped, which is great. Cultivate, grow from the ashes. Growth spasm seems really strong in this context. Land of Visioners drawing a card. Spring Bloom Druid. So this is, they're tapped. Is this the worst one? Or are these two the worst ones? These are pretty conditional. Like they don't ramp us if we need them to. Right, so if we draw an opening hand and we don't have any way to sacrifice these, then they're not ramp. That's a little concerning to me. These are kind of on my watch list. So we'll come back to this chat. You can kind of figure out what you think is worth there and what isn't. Uh, we'll, we'll just keep moving here. Um, Cross and Tusker is draw. It's basically draw two cards for three mana. You get a land and you draw a card. Um, it's also a creature. I'm gonna make sure we've got the double stacking here so we know how many creatures we've got in the end. Uh, how 
Unruly Acid Moss. Okay. And then Monbuli Acid Moss is also land destruction. Okay. And then, uh, okay, good. So that's that's set there um, with ramp. And then, okay, the edicts, I think this is like pretty well set. I really like this. Any of these being able to turn like small creatures into big ones is gonna be really strong. So I think this this is gonna stay. We've got some payoff stuff, and I think this might end up being a little bit too cute, but um, Gixian Infiltrator is another one uh, that is fresh off of the new set. Let's see if I can find it here though. Where is Gixian Infiltrator? Yeah, Gixian Infiltrator is Bloodbriar, but with uh, but less mana and smaller. Um, this effect is pretty good because if we have art, you know, if we have fetch lands, we're triggering this. If we sacrifice anything, we're triggering this. Um, I think that's pretty solid. Uh, Jonathan says the tags. This is unbearable. Oh god. Yep. Deal with it. It's okay though. Uh, Mortician beetle. So these ones are really like centric around the commander. They're sent. They also kind of center around the edicts, which are really good in this deck. And these do become big. Mortician Beetle looks at everybody's creature when it sacrifices, whereas Bloodbriar is only going to see our own. Um, I think these might be a little bit too cute. So I'm going to throw these back for now into considering. And then I have Reaping the Graves in here as like a powerful draw spell where we can kind of, you know, we've got like currently 55 creatures, a bunch of it's going to be in the graveyard. And we can, you know, maybe like draw. I mean, if this card reads three mana instant speed, draw three, it's like above curve. And I can see us like casting this for a lot more. We have a big stack interaction. Mm. Jonathan says, uh, make sure you have artifact destruction in the deck. All right, so for destroy target artifact, I think this is another place where we're gonna want like creature based stuff. Um, so like Conclave Naturalists and Caustic Caterpillar come to mind. Although I think this is an effect where, yeah, instant speed for anti-Dargo. Yeah, so we could do, I think Caustic Caterpillar is gonna be the one there, definitely. Um, Stuff that, I want stuff that's also repeatable. Like being able to use Tortex to get it back over and over again. We could just go really efficient. I mean, we, we don't have Return to Nature in here yet. This is like a staple green spell. You know, it's Graveyard Hate, it's Artifact Destruction, it's Enchantment Destruction. This is definitely a card that we're gonna play. Um, and then the Caustic Caterpillar can come out and we can just hold it up. Natural State and Nature's Claim are both very efficient. Um, the only thing is that Natural State does not hit Pestilence. Nature's Claim does. Nature's Claim hits everything. Um, Rending Vines is pretty cool too, um, but you know you can get kind of caught by it. Seal of Primordium is also interesting because it's something that we can play out early and we can just sit on it, right? Like if we play this out early, you know, Dargo player goes to go energy um, energy refractor and we can destroy it with the combo on the stack. We can also just like destroy an Oubliette if we needed to. Um, okay. Instant speed though, let's see. Silvok Replica is another one we could consider. Uh, Wickerbow Elder is also instant speed. And it's not, it's not anything that the current, I mean, and it like turns into a big thing as well, which is nice. This is kind of tempting. Like how many of these do we need though? How many of these things do we need?
Quicker Bow Elder does appeal to me. It's five mana though to deploy the whole thing. Um, whereas something like Solvok Replica is one mana cheaper. I think I do want to have one reusable creature effect with that, which would be Caustic Caterpillar. And then we've got Return to Nature, Caustic Caterpillar. And I think that's currently it right now. We could also play Broken Bonds, which is a really good card, um, or Broken Wings, sorry. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. I think this is a great one. Masked Vandal. Masked Vandal is good. It's, it's efficient, it exiles. Um, the thing with Mass Vandal is it isn't instant speed. So we would have to kind of be like ahead of the game on it. And it's also gonna demand that we exile a creature from our graveyard, which probably isn't that big of a deal. I think we're gonna go with Broken Wings for the time being. Broken Wings more and more in this format is acting like removal. Like this is like terminate on a card. Um, you know, whether it's like, uh, What's the card I'm thinking of? Um, Silumgar's... Uh, let's see, Silumgar Scavenger, for example, is starting to show up in more black decks. Um, some of the other flyers like Falconrath Noble. You know, you've got your classic like Crackling Drake. Anytime, you know, the Selesnia, um Seder Enchanter decks give their creatures evasion and flying. That's one way to do it. Sailor's Bane oftentimes gives things flying. So I, I like that as like a modal card that is operating at instant speed. So this is going to be a naturalize. There we go. And this is going to go in with return to nature, which is that. And return to nature, of course, is also a graveyard hate spell, which I'm having a hard time finding. There we go. This one is, I, I will admit, this one is a little bit packed when it comes to the different tags, but it's a little messy right now just because of the first take on it. Let's talk about Ashnod's Altar. Is this card like good in here? I'm kind of feeling like it isn't. I'm gonna take it out for now because I just, I just, I'm not seeing it just yet. But if you guys think it's something I should be doing, let me know. Bayou Groff seems awesome in this deck. I'm excited to cast this. Just like a two mana, like sacrifice your, you know, some stupid creature and make a five four. Um, really like this one, so we're gonna put that in here. I think Persistent Specimen with all the Edicts is gonna be great. Um, we've got some, oh, Sakura Tribe Elder. We don't have Steve in here yet. Oh, that is not a draw spell. Um. Overwhelming Remorse is gonna be cracked in this in this deck. Um, I think Professor of Zoomancy can come out. Penumbra Spider is really good, but we also have Reach in the Command Zone, and I don't really wanna be sacrificing the two fours, so I don't think that's gonna make it. Um, I don't think that this stuff where like dies triggers is really where we wanna be either, because we do have sacrifice effects, but um, but it's not necessarily like core to what we're doing. Um, Caustic Caterpillar is gonna go under Naturalize and it's also gonna go under Creatures. Okay, we've got our Sweepers. This doesn't change, we're always gonna play this. Um, Possibility Storm, welcome. Glad to have you here. Uh, Possibility Storm is Islane. Uh, you should go check out his YouTube channel. Um, he's got some great content over there, doing a little bit of a CPDH push these days. We're gonna be doing a, uh, a live stream actually, and this is going to be the deck that we, uh, that we play during that live stream. So I'm gonna pull up his Possibility Storm. In fact, I just went onto YouTube today and added the Possibility Storm as one of our featured channels on um, on the uh, the Tryhards YouTube. So uh, let me bring this up. Hmm. Interesting. But if I have technical issues here. Hmm. There it is. Okay, cool. Possibility Storm. So yeah, while you all have a, a chance here, make sure to go 
check out Possibility Storm. He's really close to getting that thousand subscribers, which is a really important thing here. Um, lurking while playing Modern Warfare 2. Oh, nice. Thanks for that. I can also throw you guys on mine. Awesome. Do that. Yeah, we're, uh, you know, this this community is like still uh, not huge in the sense that it's not well represented in the in, in like media content. So anything that we can do as a community to support each other in getting the word out there is going to help bring this to the masses. And for those of you who haven't seen the interview between Clay and uh, Scarecrow, a member of the Popper Rules, the Popper, um, the PDH Rules Committee, you should go watch it. And one of the quotes that really just hit home for me, and it's something that I've been saying for a long time, is Popper, and this is my take on it, Popper, but he said PDH is the future of magic. It's a real hot take, but there's a lot of reasons for why that is. Uh, the accessibility, you know, the economy is really tough and a lot of people aren't able to play magic at the competitive level they want to because the cards are simply too expensive. Magic has become such a cash cow that having formats that are interesting, engaging, dynamic, constantly getting floods of new cards, it's just there's a lot to be said for 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 PDH and for Popper really. So um, so yeah, anything you can do to support uh, what Islane, myself, Puzzlebox, um, anyone making content for this, uh, it, it's, it, it means the world. So okay, um, let's start getting our lands in here so we can start getting a little bit closer to our um, our final number. We actually did have some of lands in here. We got Bajuka Bog, so untagged lands. Okay, so we've got seven lands. So let's do uh, 36, so we need 29. So let's just do 29 swamps for now and we'll come back and we'll rebalance this later. Chris saying, and that's why we see EDH players proxy, here to play against the people, not their wallets. Bingo. That right there earns you a pinned chat, my friend. That is hot fire. Nobody wants to play a game where you can't compete because you don't have the money to do so. Frankly, like I don't have the money to play Magic right now. Um, I just have what I have. Uh, and that doesn't limit me because of the systems we found and because Popper is very expensive because I can build a competitive deck for 35 bucks. Um, and. And I think, yeah, the proxies is a huge deal in that regard. So yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. We've got the ramp package, which is still too big, but we'll be able to come back and cut this. Monvuli Acid Moss is a card I really want to have in the deck, um, just because it's going to be great for mana fixing. It's like a piece of utility that just costs us one more in a deck that has a ton of ramp. So when we have a lot of ramp that is on three, it's okay if we have one on four because we're likely to have more than one of them in hand if we have 15 and it won't be our only one. So it's gonna have extra utility and that's really important to me right now, especially if we're trying to like outgrind, you know, grindy decks. Um, so I think that one will stay. We're probably looking at Primal Druid and Viridian Emissary in all honesty. Um, so some of the other things we can cut here. Um, oh, did I not add? So we need to go up one more land. 36, 37, probably 36. 36 and 15 ramp spells. So we're looking at 51 mana sources. It's actually quite a bit. Um, I think I kind of like that. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay, so some of the stuff here, I'm really, really into the Encore cards in this deck. Encore seems perfect for what we want to do. We Encore our stuff, it goes in, it rushes in and it it dies and it does damage and it generates value, particularly Exquisite Huntmaster. I mean, this thing is creating all the fodder we need for Skyfisher Spider. Um, so this one's a slam dunk. I'm gonna throw this one in Creatures. Um, Bloodbriar Adept is actually really, um, is really interesting because this one on the first cast probably isn't killing anything, but when it encores, we're doing minus three, minus three. I don't know if that's gonna be good enough in this deck. Um, it is making a couple of three fours, which is good. And then we can sacrifice them. The main thing I like about this is that we can sacrifice the Encored copies with Skyfisher Spider. So it's just like bodies that we can use very liberally. Um, Eye Blight's Colors is kind of interesting too. Colony Garden is a good land. FP, you are a hero. Yep, Colony Garden is an amazing land in this deck. Yeah, and we can tutor for it too. 
you know, if we just need fodder to kill something, we can like crop rotation for it, which is gross. Um, yeah, that's excellent. We're also going to play Gingerbread Cabin. And we're going to play... No, that, that's about right. And then we may play Opal Palace. Um, although, in all likelihood, we want to be reusing the Skyfisher Spider. I'm not sure how good Opal Palace will be here. We're going to hold off on that because we're, we're just going to have other stuff in the deck that we can kill people with. So we'll, we'll come back to that one. Um, all the creatures in here are gas. We have all the initiative. We have all the good Monarch. We actually don't have staunch throne guard. But we are going to be absolutely like whoring with Monarch and initiative. Like this is going to be a disgusting initiative deck. Like such a rude, such a rude initiative deck. Um, ooh, I love Fierce Empath finding... Oh, Fierce Empath doesn't actually find that much, does it? Finds Finclade Fugitives and Crescent and Tusker, and that's it. Nah, that can go. Well, we could play Annoyed Altasaur. Islane says, that's kind of a sub-theme for my deck as well. Yeah, I mean, Initiative and Monarch are, like, supremely powerful in the format right now, and if you can protect them, even if it costs cards, it's basically a Planeswalker. Um, so... This deck is uniquely good <laughs> at initiative though. Like we're never ever going to miss a Throne of the Dead 3 because like as it currently stands, we're probably gonna end up with like between 30 and 32 creatures. It's like a third of the deck and you go 10 cards deep. And there's so many of these that are like amazing hits off the initiative. Yeah, Islane says, agree there. Just any card advantage is huge when you have commons to only have commons to work with. Yeah, yeah. Repeat advantage is, is a known quantity. So Monarch is going to be good. Initiative is going to be good. And they're going to help find each other too, which is great. Okay, Gavany Unhollowed. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get plus one, plus one. That's not going to be good enough. Um, Selmgar Scavenger is a card that I'm pretty interested in. I don't think Elvish Aberration is going to make it in here. I also don't think that we're going to end up playing Wirewood Herald. I don't know that we have enough stuff here. FP saying, I think the gates are good. FP, could you tell me why you think the gates are good and why we should play it in here? Are you thinking Basilisk Gate um, to like pump creatures up and then maybe crop rotation to find the gates, maybe Gate Creeper Vine? It does give us a way to punch through some additional damage. I don't know if it's what we need. So we could play keep, we could play, yeah, let's just look it up. So of these, we would play all of these except Gateway Plaza. And honestly, like Heapgate isn't my favorite. I, it's a good card, but we only have so many gates, right? We only have one, two, three, four, five gates that we would be playing. We could dip into Gateway Plaza, but it's like not my favorite. Um, Like tapped and it costs us a mana. It just feels kind of shitty. And you can create treasure tokens, which is nice. Um, we don't have a lot of like artifact synergy in the deck, so it would just be mana, but something we could do. We can revisit this. Basilisk Gate, like pumping something up is, is not nothing and being able to tutor for these is good too. The thing is, is that our tutoring is gonna be busy doing other things. Like Golgari Rot Farm is oftentimes like the last thing that you tutor if you draw crop rotation late because what, what it's gonna allow you to do is reuse a Mortuary Mire, a Witch's Cottage, um, a Bajuka Bog, you can do it at instant speed, which is really good. So I, I don't know that gates are gonna make their way in here, just because we're, for one thing, we're also gonna need to have a proper density of basics to fetch with all this stuff. Um, and we don't wanna have like too many utility lands. I don't think Wirewood Herald is good here. Finds an elf. 
Fierce Empath, considering. Islane says, I initially built PDH decks with gates and whatnot that come in tapped, but honestly, I think just basics are better. The only lands you can, and only lands you can cycle are worth it. Yeah, and I don't even know if we're gonna play the lands that cycle. We might. Artifact lands are fine as well. Yeah, we'll play the artifact lands because there's some like small synergies there uh, with cards like Deadly Dispute and Costly Plunder, which can also sacrifice artifacts. Um, we're not gonna have a ton of it though. It's gonna be really like mostly, mostly not. No Dockside, yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't even know if we will run those. Like, cause remember it dilutes our gingerbread cabin and our witch's cottage. The gingerbread cabin's not a big deal. Like the food is probably not gonna matter most of the time, but because we're gonna have a lot of basics, it's just a free thing that we can do. Um, yeah, have a good one, Islane. Thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, you can just keep keep chilling. We'll we'll, uh, we'll be we'll be here. And I want to take a brief moment here. We've got nine of you in here. Thank you so much for coming to the stream today and for hanging out and just enjoying the content and participating. It's it's fantastic to have a bunch of people interested in this. Um, if you're enjoying this, just a quick reminder, because sometimes folks don't do this, leave a like if you're enjoying the content. This is uh, a, really a labor of love between me and Clay, and it's always really validating to see people supporting through their likes. And of course, if you wanna see more of this content, go and hit that subscribe button. Clay and I are really working towards that thousand subscribers mark. And once we hit there, we get to unlock a whole bunch of new functionality for you and for us. So it's a win-win. And uh, yeah, thank you for your support and for, for coming and joining us today. Um, okay, so other cards. There's some black stacks cards that I kind of want to fit in here too. Um, yeah, Poison Belly Ogre is one of them. This is a card some of you may not be familiar with. It's not a card that sees a ton of play, but I've been popularizing this card. Whenever another creature comes into play, they lose a life. This is gonna hurt us a little bit, but we can regain that life. What Poison Belly Ogre is doing is any loop or combo that's using Ashnod's Altar or some sort of infinite sacrifice loop with Thermopod or with, you know, uh, Skirk Prospector, something along those lines, um, this shuts it down. They can't combo. They'll just, as they combo, they're losing life for each one of those creatures that's coming into play. Um, this one, Poison Belly Ogre, also does this a very similar thing to Falcon Wrath Noble, which is that through that loop, you're also sacrificing things, so they're dying, so we're getting drain triggers. So these are really good cards because they sit out and play, and essentially they need to be answered before that player can combo, which gives us like space to operate, to continue to develop our board, to draw the cards necessary to interact with what they're doing. So I, I like these. Another one that we could consider too is called Bloodseeker. The only thing is that Bloodseeker is uh, is quite small. Um, it is a 1-1. One, one. And, uh, but Bloodseeker also uh, does not hit us, which is, uh, which is interesting. It's cheap. Usually Bloodseeker is one of the first things that I will buff up with um, Forge off of the initiative because it is such an important stacks piece. So we're at 127 cards with lands. So that means we actually have not gone down on cards yet. <laughs> so we need to start cutting cards. I don't think Wirewood Herald's gonna make it. This card is like cool because it's on death and we can guarantee that we're gonna get that death trigger, but it's not really finding anything that's like really good. I like that it finds removal, but it's like not the best removal spell in the world. Um, Elves, it's finding us Finclade Fugitives, Entourage of Trust, uh, it's finding us... Yeah, Abyssal Gatekeeper is not stacked. Um, well, okay, so in CPDH, stacks happens through the, the command tax, which means removal. Um, but we're actually starting to evolve a little bit past that initial assessment. The real stacks effects are the ones that punish combos or doing their thing. So like Peregrine Drake combo cannot combo through a Poison Belly Ogre or a Bloodseeker if they don't have a way to remove them. So um, so that's something to keep in mind there. These are actual stacks effects, right? In, in the context. Abyssal Gatekeeper though is just a great mass edict. Like this is gonna be so good in our deck. You know, just cast the commander, sack something stupid, everybody sacks something else and we destroy something. 
Um, which, you know, like, honestly, if this happens early enough in the game, you know, if we go like turn, turn one persistent specimen, turn to abyssal gatekeeper, turn, you know, four, eventually we play out our, uh, our commander and we make everybody sack everything. There might not be anything left on the board and we might actually destroy like a mana rock, which sounds super rude and it is, um, but we'll, we'll probably do it. Um, okay. And we still need to probably get more removal in here. Silumgar Scavenger is good, but I don't know if it's going to make it. We've got Girder Goons. This is not going to make the cut. It's a good card, but it's better in, much, much better in Garna. Uh, Phyrexian Vivisector is interesting, but again, it's like leaning really heavily into the sacrifice. I'm kind of tempted to put Blister Pod in here because it just, it is kind of like a weird form of ramp. Chris saying the undying spells, how great are those really? Well, it pains me that you say that, but I understand where you're coming from and you might be right. Um, the idea here is that these are gonna have broad usability for some of the things that, um, I mean, like undying malice, evil and feign death can do some really interesting things. If somebody comes in and attacks you and you block with Thorn of the Black Rose, you go Undying Malice, you resolve combat, they gain the Monarch, your creature dies, trades with theirs, and then returns to the battlefield bigger and then gets the Monarch back from them so they don't actually draw a card. It's used with Skyfisher Spider to, um, to get multiple uh, kill spells out of it. Um, we can use it on the initiative creatures as well. Um, so it seems good. but is kind of a small package. Maybe Skyfisher Spider is like just good enough being a thing that destroys something, right? Maybe, maybe that's just good enough. Like we don't necessarily need to like lean into the synergy super, super hard. Got Moan of the Unhollowed and I'm pretty excited to play that this in this deck here. Um, Makes two, two, two zombies, and then you flash it back to make some more. Oh, this is gonna be a brutal build. I think we're gonna have to cut Poison Belly Ogre and just keep Bloodseeker. Yeah, just keep the efficient one. Um, so we need cuts from here. Maybe it's Viridian Emissary. Like what's our CMC of creatures right now? Uh, permanence. So CMC one, two, and three things are going to be things that we generally are like happy to sacrifice. So 15, 14, so 29, 33. The ogre. Well, first of all, Big Dirty, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Um, thanks for joining today. The ogre, Poison Belly Ogre, says every time another creature enters the battlefield, its controller loses one life. And the reason that people play this, or the reason that I actually play this card in a lot of my mono black decks, is that it gives us an out to the uh, to the infinite sacrifice combos, like in Dargo Kesket or in um, or in a persist combo deck um, where the creatures come into play over and over again is not an infinite loop that they can sustain because they're going to die. Are actually going to die from that combo. Um, so it's a stacks piece that sticks out in play. And it's also really cool because when we complete the initiative, we can actually find these stacks pieces and we can put them into play with hexproof. So opponent like can't even kill the thing, you know? And a lot of times, like if you put a poison belly ogre into play with, with hexproof, it becomes a 6-6. Six, six and a black 6-6, six, six, and it just doesn't die to anything anymore. The other thing is that Poison Belly Ogre is sneaky in that it deals a lot more damage than you end up taking because you're only one player. But everybody else, they're playing creatures, they're losing life. I've been really happy with Poison Belly Ogre um, in, my, uh, 
in my passageways here deck. It just does a ton of work, ton of work. Um, okay, what else can we cut? I think Briar, Briar Blade Adept is gonna go. Eye Blight Colors is pretty cool because we make three elf tokens, which is interesting. So it's like four bodies on one and it's a three, three on its own. This one might still make it. Scavenger has got haste, and that's the thing that I'm most excited about with it. And haste is so relevant right now, like haste in CPDH and combining haste and flying, let's just put it that way. Haste and flying right now in CPDH is insane. If you can get the initiative back from somebody, you can unexpectedly swoop it off of somebody. It's just amazing. Um, does take sacrificing a creature and that kind of like, we don't want to do too much of that. I'm actually even like eyeing like Bayou Groff. Like, do we really want to be using our fodder for Groff or do we want to be using it for Skyfish or Spider? Like killing something instead of just making a big body? Might be that this is not where we want to be. Um, Soltai Emissary is kind of interesting. This is like a draw spell. Um, it's, it's actually not, it's only if it's a creature. You can turn it face up for its uh, mana cost if it's a creature. We're not going to play this. The Sultai Emissary is not good enough. Desperate Farmer, not good enough. Uh, we, oh my god, I can't believe this, but we don't have Grey Merchant of... If you search Gary, does Grey Merchant of Asphodel come up? <gasps> for shame! Gotta have Gary. Always. Um, Gary, Gary. I like Silumgar Scavenger. I've talked myself into it. I like it more than Bayou Groff. Uh, we don't need this. It's just a token maker. These um, Eldrazi creatures are kind of interesting uh, because they're not only two bodies, but they're like uh, also a form of ramp. Function Gary? No way. No way. <laughs> so you could also, can you go F, F Gary? Whoa, that's weird. I'm not sure how to explain what's happening here. Hmm. Okay, we're getting distracted though. <laughs> Nothing new there. Okay, um, and we're gonna need more removal spells. We have a lot of draw spells. Look at all of this draw. <whistles> Silverback Shaman I think can go. I like Silverback Shaman a lot because it kind of has that effect of like punishing your opponent for killing it. I mean, then again, like, we don't even have Owlbear in here. And I really do want to play these like chonkers. I want to play like chonkers that can just like end people, you know, like big four four or coming at you. Uh, Silverback Shaman is like, that is a big chonker. Um, let's bring it back. Uh, oop. Uh, main board, there we go. Okay, so that's good. We need to cut the ramp. Um, Four crawlers, not good enough. I feel like we want our, our draw spells to be creatures in some way, because then we can like, we're like drawing cards off of them when we sacrifice them. So it's like the main thing is I, I wanna have enough fodder in this deck that we're not having to sacrifice good stuff to Skyfisher, because notably Skyfisher cannot sacrifice itself. my concern is that we're going to be pinched between wanting to sacrifice like needing to sacrifice something but not wanting to sacrifice what we have in play so that's why i'm looking at dusk legion zealot visionary 
Prowler, Prowler, Occultist. FP says, I love Oracle tag draw search. Hmm. Oh, so you can go tag draw? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, there's Abundant Harvest, too. Just a one-for-one, one, though. I think we can do a lot better than a one-for-one one in this deck. It's really good in Witherbloom Apprentice, but... Okay. Um, we're missing Snuff Out. Hey, Nate, diggity, what is up, my dude? Glad to have you here. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Well, I'll say the same back to you. Hey, Dad. Nate's uh, an esteemed deck builder in the community, um, working on really cool stuff. Not looking forward to playing against whatever you come up with this and this spooter. And this spooter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's already like, you know, we're at 118 cards, and we have so many more to go and the card quality is really high, which is a good indicator, but it means suffering for us deck builders. Big Dirty, sounds sweet. I was thinking it might help an Adina build I'm working on. Yeah, absolutely. I think any black deck that's like concerned about getting comboed out should consider those cards because it also stops like Peregrine Drake Flicker combo. It stops Archaeomancer Snap combo. Um, although Archaeomancer Snap might be able to do it a limited number of times until they get enough mana to dig for a removal spell and then bounce or kill it and then combo off. So it doesn't like hard wall it, but it creates a, a barrier to comboing that I think is, is really positive for us. Um, so we've got Reckoner's Bargain, Deadly Dispute, Costly Plunder, Village Rights. I don't currently have any protection really for the Skyfisher Spider. So if somebody oubliettes it, our answers are Village Rights, Costly Plunder, Deadly Dispute, Reckoner's Bargain, uh, Return to Nature, Caustic Caterpillar, and what's the last one? Broken Wings. Okay, th that's like plenty. That that's plenty to deal with an Oubliette. And plus, like, Oublietting this commander, I, I, I don't know that that's really what people want to be doing. So, yeah. Um, how many little creatures do we have? We have Dusk, so one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, So, because we need to have enough fodder. So that's like a fifth of the deck, which is, we have 50 mana sources and some of those are fodder. Yeah, that, that that's, that's plenty. So, ah, but see, that makes me really not want to get rid of these cheap ones here. Maybe like with 23 draw spells, maybe we don't need boner ornament or lantern of revealing. Is that what's happening here? Because like the rest of this just seems great. Like we can always cast Skyfisher Spider, sacrifice a Primal Druid or a Viridian Emissary to put a land into play. Um, like I like these as being bodies that give us something when they die. Um, as opposed to just being like some generically good ram spell. Hmm. What about... Probably gonna play Cast Down. Probably gonna play Doom Blade. Probably just play Murder. Murder. Yeah. Boy, this is gonna be fucking tough. Maybe Innocent Blood.
like maybe maybe focusing on the creature based stuff yeah let's do that i like innocent blood but these other ones here are reusable so we're gonna favor that um Jeez, the stack of cards is fucking crazy. 39 creatures. And I don't even have the um, Sanitarium Skeleton or the Clay Revenant in here yet, which both which both work so well with Tortured Existence. Like 12 removal spells, 15 with the Sweepers, plus 5, so that's 20. That's plenty. 20 with a Root Kill spell in the Command Zone is plenty, so we are good on removal. Um... Man, these cuts, like, where, like, what are we supposed to do? All right, maybe Mon Vulias and Moss comes out. Maybe Greater Tanuki comes out. I mean, man, the Tanuki, like, cycling with Torptex, Unstable Obelisk. Oh, but that's, that's adding a card, though, FB. How are you doing this to me? Obelisk, yeah. But, you know, here's the thing. Obelisk, though, is just a way more expensive version of Skyfisher Spider. All right, so we're just going to cut like the worst uh, of these ramp spells, which is going to be, I think I'm going to just test out the Viridian Emissary and the Primal Druid. So let's just cut um, like Primal Growth. Dude, the opening of Viridian Emissary or Primal Druid into Primal Growth is so good. Fine. Monvuli Moss is out. I'm going to cut two more of these. I think that Growth Spasm is potentially better in this deck than Harrow. Yep. And remember, the bodies are important here. Maybe we're not doing Feign Death, Undying Evil, and Undying Malice. Oh, this hurts my soul. This is just one of those decks. So many good cards. FP, don't worry about it, man. Your job is to create suffering for me by adding cards when I'm supposed to be cutting them. This is a it's a it's a team effort, and maybe I'm a little masochistic. There's just like so many cards in here that I would like never cut in a million years but it kind of looks to me like like these chonkers here are probably not necessary. How many black pips do we actually have? Do we have enough for Grey Merchant? Yeah, we do. And we can reuse Grey Merchant like endlessly. So let's cut Silverback Gorilla and Owl Bear. Man, we don't even have Annoyed Altasaur in here either. just so huge. The thing is, is like cutting these cards at the top end kind of worries me because we have 15, 15 mana ramp sources and 36 lands. So part of that, I think that's part of the reason why I'm going to stay on Kroos and Tusker and Greater Tanuki because these are cards that can do things early and late and they're in our graveyard through cycling we can get them back with tortured existence or any of these other things um and then these can help be kind of like our win con in some way i mean the other way to look at this is like initiative is a win con you know we just have three initiative cards in here that is or four um that is just a win con deck builder is a hard job position you know, it's 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 the hard kind of fun, but I'm I'm very happy and lucky to be doing with what I'm doing. So don't feel too bad for me. This is this is great. Get to hang out with you all in chat. You guys get to help me build these great magic decks, and uh, it's a win-win situation. I think I'm gonna cut Eye Blight Colors. This card is 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 cool, but you know probably not good enough. Um, Can 
Okay, we're down to 13, guys. 13. Uh, okay, Carrier and Blister Pod, these ones can go. We can get down to 11 cards. This is where the cuts just get so hard. Like, we could cut... It's like 22 draw spells in the deck. Oh my god, and I don't even have... Um, I don't even have Siphon Mind. Another avenue I was kind of thinking about with this deck too would be um, would be the discard creatures, like Rotting Rats in particular, because there's like two bodies. Um, there's a lot of unearthed cards that I want to run in here, but I'm like resisting. Like you go and take a look at take a look at this, and it's like, oh my god, I want oh no, Scrapwork Rager, no, <laughs> oh. Yeah, we have to play this. We might even play Rotting Rats too. Rotting Rats just being two bodies in a deck that just draws like so many cards and like can reuse the cards seems like a really good sell. You can cut some lands. I was thinking that we could go down to 35 lands. Scrapwork Rager is a house in this deck. Absolute house. Rotting Rats. Okay, so 14 cards to cut. Okay, uh, my thought is that Bonder's Ornament, as good of as, as a card it is, Bonder's Ornament and uh, Lantern of Revealing, I think these cards can go. We, we have so much card draw, like 25 card draw spells. Maybe cut Murder and more expensive removal because the commander has built in removal. Well, first of all, Ezra, I haven't seen you before here. Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad to have you here in the chat. And I think that's a fine recommendation. Um, we're currently sitting on uh, 20 removal spells. Yeah, 12, 13, five. Um, so 20, and we're drawing a shitload of cards. And we can like reuse the Skyfisher Spider. I think that that's a, a reasonable take. The only thing is we are technically really on like 11 removal, direct removal spells, because Broken Wings is conditional. This is not always gonna be removal. Um, so I don't know how much I wanna go down on this. Um, to cut Murder. I would actually be more likely to cut something like Doom Blade, as weird as that might sound. And actually, you know what? It's not Murder and it's not Doom Blade. It's uh, actually Obnixilus's Cruelty. Um, because exiling is really good. Uh, exiling creatures, particularly when it comes to combos, is really strong. This one's three mana, minus five, minus five. If it would die, exile it instead. This is just really good. It's like the second copy of or Overwhelming Remorse, because a lot of times Remorse is going to be three mana. In this deck, I think it'll often be like two and one mana because of the number of creatures we have. But, like... Doomblade is starting to become kind of a problematic card in that it like doesn't hit black creatures. And black is like a really big part of the meta. So like we can afford to play Snuff Out because Snuff Out is just game, game endingly good at times. Um, but we also have Feed the Swarm in here, which is actually another naturalize effect. So we have no problem with Oubliette in this deck. Oh, I'm so excited about Scrapwork Rager. Guys, this card is like, I'm like unreasonably excited about this like four mana two two that draws a card. <laughs> it's like, you know, the, the, the stat line on it is, it'd be nice if it were like a two three, but unearth. Unearth is a hell of a drug in this deck. You imagine the turn where we're like, unearth scrap work rager, draw a card, sack it to Skyfisher Spider. Mm, let's go. Uh, so we're down to 14 ramp. So if we're at 30, so we're at 49 mana sources, because we have 14 ramp, 35, yeah, 49. Okay, so we've cut a removal spell. Now we need to cut 11 cards. <laughs> okay, Annoyed Altasaur, you're cool, but we've got other stuff to do with our mana. First Fear Garganta, I really like, but I don't know that we're often going to sacrifice First Fear Garganta. Like, this is more a card that you like attack with a whole bunch and then you can unearth it later and then sacrifice it. 
So like there's that element, like you just beat people up with it. And then when it dies, you can unearth it, get in for more damage, draw a card and then sacrifice it on second main. Um, so I think that still probably warrants inclusion. Mm. What else though? My God. Huntmaster, like maybe, maybe Solemgar Scavenger. I really like this card, but I just, just gotta find cuts. Mona of the Unhollowed is incredible, right? Like four bodies on one card and they're two twos. Maybe Rotting Rats doesn't make the cut. I really like it, but eight cards. Tick tock, tick tock. Uh, is crop rotation? God, crop rotation is amazing in this. Like Bajuka Bog, Witch's Cottage, Mortuary Mire, Golgari Rot Farm, Opal Palace. Like to close the game out. Because eventually, like, we'll have cast Skyfisher Spider a bunch of times, and then we'll just, like, Opal Palace it up, and it'll be, you know, it'll be like a 6-6, six, six, and we'll just kill people with that. Or actually Colony. Colony Garden as well. Do we need Gary? I mean, Gary is, like, really good, because we can reuse it with Tortex. I mean, Gary is just like a good card. This is just like, good card, good. Um, Reaping the Graves seems so cracked in this deck, but it's just like another draw spell. Maybe, oh wait here, maybe Reaping the Graves is better than Read the Bones. Do we have any like shitty draw spells in here? Like a three mana draw two kind of thing? No, we got rid of those. 24 draw spells. Chris says, Gary is a nice win con in a long game. Exactly, like it's a win con, it's like keeping you alive. We can reuse it over and over again. Ezra says, uh, re-crop rotation. Do you think the new surveil land is worth an inclusion? Tokasha's dig site. Um, you know, I think Tokasha's dig site would be fine. Yeah, Tokasha's dig site is uh, um, another thing we can tutor. So the idea here would be that we're tutoring for Tokasha's dig site when we really, like, uh, when we don't need to, when we don't have an edict creature in the graveyard or in hand, because when we do, like the best form of like oppressive interaction with the table is to just like prevent anybody from ever having anything on the board and crop rotation is a witch's cottage. It is a mortuary mire. It is, you know, these other things. So Tokasha's dig site's probably something that we're not going to crop rot for. Not to mention that, like, if we're playing against a graveyard based deck, crop rotation is an amazing bajuka bog. You know, you just find bajuka bog. Um, and the secondary mode of being able to get a Golgari Rot Farm on end step and then replay it on your main phase during your turn is, is just so good. We don't actually, with all the ramp, I don't know that we need Terramorphic Expanse actually, or Evolving Wilds. So what we'll do instead is we'll play Witherbloom Campus and Witherbloom Campus is kind of gonna be like our shitty uh, Bonders Ornament. <laughs> um, we could also play the land that draws a card. Wait, type land, O oh, draw. Really? Do we not? Huh, there's not, oh, there's not a red green one. There's, or there's a red green one, but there's not a green black one. Yeah, ally colors only. Yeah, Ezra, you're on it. Yep, okay. Um, I've got Rotten Reunion in here for Graveyard Hate because it's also tokens to sacrifice the Skyfisher Spider. And I don't think that comes out either. Um, kind of fucking whack, but like, 
Like broken wings is also removal and we kind of, I'm concerned about cutting too much more removal. Maybe I shouldn't be because the command zone is removal. But like broken wings or return to nature is another possible cut. You know, frankly, I'm gonna cut Abyssal Gatekeeper. Abyssal Gatekeeper is a card that I consistently have difficulty finding room for in my decks. And the reason being is that in grindy mid-range decks, you don't really want your creature to eat another creature when it leaves. And the reason for that is that a lot of times, like we're, we don't wanna stretch too deep into, into creatures that, that are just providing fodder. Like in mid-range decks, we want our creature, you know, our creatures to be like pretty high quality. Like it's why we ramp, it's why we're drawing cards, it's why we're drawing the game out is because we wanna use our superior mana and resource advantage to deploy relevant stuff, you know, bigger stuff, and then overwhelm our opponents. And so like I could see Abyssal Gatekeeper being a card that like is hard to activate. Our opponents can actually choose when it happens because they can just kill it. So like if we have one big creature in play and we have that other and we have the gatekeeper, it can kill the gatekeeper and make us sacrifice it. So it's it's not gonna work. It's not gonna be good here. And I just don't wanna dilute too much with, uh, with, with shit creatures that don't do anything. Perilous Mirror can go as well. I like this card, but um, it's not multiple bodies. That one had kind of slipped under the radar. Um, Brindle Shoat, I like. But Brindle Shoat could also, Brindle Shoat's like one of the best fodder creatures in the format, but Brindle Shoat could also be, it could also just be Carrier Thrall or it could be Blister Pod, both of which like ramp and provide two bodies. So like how good is the 3-3? Three, three? Like the deck, this deck is full of like big slappy hitters and we've got Initiative and Monarch out the crazy. We're killing everything. Eventually we're ramping into these big, you know, big, Brett, so we can get back. I think Brindle Show could come out and we could bring Blister Pod and um, Blister Pod into the main board. That's so sad though. I was really excited to play Brindle Show. It's like one of my one of my pet cards in in uh, in Popper. Luckily, I haven't scared any of y'all away yet with my ASMR chewing sounds from this uh, delicious soup that I'm enjoying right now. <laughs> um, so let's look up O dies, O draw. Let's see if we've, uh... oh God, bequeathal. Damn, Bequeathal is really, really good. One mana draw two. Hmm. Yeah, that's really efficient. And then there's Yavimaya Elder as well. Can like sacrifice itself to draw a card and, well, it's technically three cards, right? You're getting two lands and then you're getting a card, but you can also just sacrifice it to the um to the spider and then get the two lands like if this card just reads get two lands it's still fine if it's pr producing a body maybe not ideal we could also play spore crawler um i cut this one earlier but like these cards these cards that are providing both a body and a card draw are are really potent so um, I'm kind of interested in this as well. We could go full pals mode and play Rune Servitor. <laughs> Everyone draws cards. Let's go. But I really should not be adding card draw to this deck right now. Like this is... So here, here's a question. We could cut some of like the... 
We could cut like a read the bones maybe, you know, in exchange for a creature that also draws a card when it dies. Um, Cause these creatures that die and draw a card also make it like harder to attack us. They make it less likely that they get blocked because you're like gaining resources from them. And they're basically the same thing as Phyrexian Rager. Nobody is ever going to exile a spore crawler, so it will always die and draw me a card. So it's like Phyrexian Rager that happens a little bit later, which is probably good enough in this deck. So we could cut Read the Bones. I'm a little hesitant to cut Sign in Blood and Night's Whisper because these are so generically powerful, but um, sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do Read the Bones. I mean, like, look at this top end of draw spells right here. Like, this is meaty. Meaty Golgari. So Bequeathal, yeah, Bequeathal's gas. Like, Bequeathal onto, like, an Eldrazi Scion token is pretty fun, too. That's uh, an interaction I've used before. Um, so Blister Pod. Oop. Blister Pod. So Brindle Shout comes out because I don't think the 3-3 three, three is going to be relevant. Um, luckily, Blister Pod and Carrier Thrall make 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scion tokens, not the zero ones. You know, the other thing is we could go Eldrazi. There's a bunch of these. Damn, there's a bunch of these that are actually like good. Like Kozilek's Predator, Nest Invader. Ugh. So these are also ramp. Hmm. I shouldn't have looked. I shouldn't have looked. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I'm looking away. <laughs> looking away. Um, persistent specimen is good. There's actually, okay, here's another thought. What if instead of Blister Pod and Carrier Thrall, we played Clay Revenant? Uh, so we'll do O return, O hand, um, color equals, color equals black type creature. This is gonna pull up the two that I'm looking for, which is, um, oh fuck. Oh, there's so many other good cards here. Sanitarium Skeleton and Clay Revenant. Yeah, so these two return to your hand. And what's really nice about them is that they're not only like repeat fodder. Actually, I think this is better, isn't it? Like it's not multiple bodies, but it can be multiple bodies if we just bring it back and recast it over again. I think that's actually better. And they work really well with, um, with Tortex. Jonathan Pod Kamorka. Folks, welcome our friend Jonathan here. Uh, Pod is on the Popper Commander Rules Committee, so give him a warm welcome here. Jonathan, we are building Skyfisher Spider, the new Golgari boy on the block, about to be real oppressive up in here. Uh, this shit is super gnarly. We're having a real tough time with the last seven cuts, so maybe you've got some insight on uh, what we could what we what we could be cutting and why. Um, Chris saying, hey John, when can we play Planeswalkers? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, there's an active, uh, active discussions going on in the PDH community right now about the uh, legality or the sort of, it's not the legality, but it's the format criteria of what you can and can't play. And there are some of us that want to play uh, Planeswalkers and there are some of us that want to play commons in the command zone and uh, like the backgrounds and things like that. And uh, someday I think we will, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna dive too, too nervous into that. Uh, Jonathan says, cough anytime you want, nervous. <laughs> yeah, see the thing is a lot of competitive players right now are actually just uh, rule zeroing them and it's competitive. So it kind of creates some weird tension there. Uh, my feeling is that like casual players who don't want to play with them can always decide not to, uh, but the prohibition against it kind of can be a little frustrating for me sometimes, but we're not gonna dive too much into that. We've we've had like almost uh, like 12 hours of discussions on that in the Triad server right now, so um, yeah. But 
you can always, with your friends, play those cards. And hey, you know, the more you play it, you know, the more normalized it becomes, you know, maybe someday that helps uh, change the direction of the uh, RC's decision. So, but regardless, Jonathan, thank you for being here. Glad to have you. Um, 107 cards. Oh, it's so agonizing. Got a cut. <sighs> Maybe Moan of the Unhallowed. I mean, this just seems really good. We're like ramping so freaking hard. Um, okay, we're gonna do a quick experiment. We're seven cards over. So if I added four lands, one, two, three, no one. One, two, three, four. We're gonna go up to 111 cards. We're not gonna make any cuts yet. I'm gonna add the lands so that we're at a good count for mana sources. And we're gonna play this deck through a couple of playtest rounds just to feel how it how it is. Because one of the things I don't know is like how much top end do we need? How much ramp do we need if our top end isn't really huge? If we're drawing a lot of cards, how much ramp do we need? This is not an opening hand we can keep. So I'll uh, resend that back. This is a good opening hand because if all else fails, we can Opal Palace into green for a Cultivate. And by turn three, we probably hit a land. And the moment we hit a land, we're off to the races with this and this. So we'll draw for turn, uh, play out the Swamp, Sanitarium Skeleton, uh, Swamp, uh, Bloodseeker. There it is. So we still can't cast this. So what we'll do is uh, Wither Bloom Campus tapped, pass, draw into Kodama's Reach. Holy crap, we're gonna go buck wild. Um, yeah, the best way to do this would be go one, two, three, cultivate, swamp, forest. Actually, we're gonna want uh, forest, forest, I think. Uh, let's see, what have I done? Bottom of the library. Forest. Why is there no forest? Oh, we don't have any. Oh, I'm such a goofball, guys. Okay, let's restart. I only have swamps in the deck. <laughs> okay, 15 swamp, 15 forests. I was like, why are there no forests in the deck? Oh, I'm a goofball. Okay. Um, fun fact, you can uh, hover over cards in this view and go Alt-2 to decrease the number of cards in a stack. So let's just do that. 40, 40 lands, we're a little bit above 100. So we just wanna see like how much do we need all this ramp. Uh, this is a great hand. Draw, we go um, Swamp, Draw, Forest, Pass, this, we're gonna um, cycle this at end step uh, to, uh, let's see, we're, whenever you cycle, so we're gonna search up the land first, which is gonna be a forest. Uh, yeah, forest, and then we will shuffle and draw a card, which means we have to discard the hand size, so maybe we just pitch one of these lands, like um, this uh, swamp. And then we draw, play out Mona of the Unhallowed. We're gonna make a bunch of 2-2 two -two Zambies. We could have alternatively pitched Mona of the Unhollow in that sequence. Then we'll draw a card. Um, at this point, we could choose between like playing out Monarch, which actually looks pretty good right now. So we'll go Monarch. Uh, draw a card at end step. We're probably able to defend it, so we probably lose a zombie in combat. And then we go to our turn, draw. Oh, see, this is like really gross already. This is really gross. So we go to combat, swing with this, assuming they don't block because they just won't. Then we go, uh, yeah, chain devil. 
sacrificing the zombie token like this. Somebody comes in to attack, we block with the chain devil, we pay to, we reckoner's bargain. Fogging the damage, we're gonna draw the card for the monarch, and then we're gonna draw two for the reckoner's bargain. And then on our turn, we lock it down with a. Uh, See, after that interaction, we probably Bajuka Bog, just to get that black source out, and then go one, two, three, four for Vicious Battle Rager, getting a Swamp, pulling that into our hands. Um, we're going to draw for Monarch, and then we're going to burn our kill spell preemptively so we don't have to discard, cast something down, draw for upkeep, except we're also going to get a Scry Trigger, or we're going to forge. We're going to forge this boy up because uh, the initiative. It's very interesting, like in this sequence right here, we haven't used the Skyfisher Spider yet. It's like incidental, it's like a thing that we can do. Um, so maybe, that's kind of interesting. Like in this play pattern, we haven't really had, so yeah, maybe the answer here is we go, um, oop. Um, we go land, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we flash this back and we make two more Zambies. And then we just go to end step and draw and we could just hold the snuff out and pitch this forest. And next upkeep, we probably still have the initiative again. So we'll goad something this turn and we'll draw. And this time we go one, two, occultist, one, two, three, four, for um, Skyfisher Spider, sacking this, drawing a card. Uh, and then we just hold up like a removal spell. Like this is like, we just hold this up and then next turn we lock it down with this and then we run through the initiative with that. It's pretty gross. It's interesting though, the Skyfisher Spider definitely felt like, like, I didn't want to sacrifice these things. So let's let's take another shot at this. Uh, three lands, uh, no, oh, this is great. Yeah, see Viridian Emissary with Skyfisher Spider here is, is perfect. So go draw, oh, we're doing it, folks. Primal Druid with Viridian Emissary. We're gonna hit six mana on turn three. Seems like a really aggressive deck. Well, you see, this is a crazy thing, FP, is like initiative, Initiative and Monarch, when you start getting them together, it doesn't really matter what your deck is doing. Like it, it is really aggressive. And it's what's really taken mid-range decks and like turned the dial to 11 because you don't need to go balls to the wall aggro when you've got initiative. You, it's just so good. It's like you get to the, you know, if you've already gone through it once and you're going through it again and you manage to hold on to it, you can just like nug people with the trap. I've killed so many players with the trap, it's it's really powerful. So look at this, we go Persistent Specimen, pass, we go to Forest, play Viridian Emissary, and it's funny, we could sacrifice either one of these, and then we pass, draw, and look at this. We're about to go absolutely fucking crazy. Okay, we're gonna sacrifice the Viridian Emissary. The kicker on this makes us find two basic land cards and put them into play, but we're gonna find a third one because the uh, the other one, so we're gonna go Swamp, uh, swamp and forest. A lot of times in these Golgari decks, you are mainly searching for swamps. Does it say put them into play tapped? Oh my God, you just put them into play. <laughs> oh my God, that's so busted. Um, so yeah, this one into play, these ones uh, untapped. Um, and then we just pass a turn, draw. So yeah, uh, we can go one, two, three, four, Vicious Battle Rager, find a forest, I think, just to balance things out. We'll play the forest, tap one, two, three for Spring Bloom Druid. Look at, look at all the bodies we've got out here. I mean, this is fantastic. Like we can, we can reliably hold the, the initiative. We'll sit on the initiative for many turns with this, with this setup. So we'll sacrifice a swamp. 
and we'll put a forest and a swamp into the battlefield uh, tapped like that. And then we'll just pass the turn on upkeep. We're going to probably scry to oof. Um, let's just say Bloodseeker isn't useful here. So we will scry Siphon Mind to the top. Um, Siphon Mind, so good. And look at all the options we have here right now. Um, we can go... So five mana, six, seven, eight. We're on eight mana on turn five right now. Just want to point that out. <laughs> eight mana on turn five. Uh, so we go, okay, this is pretty simple. We go one, two, three, four, for Siphon Mind. And actually we're gonna tap this and leave another green up. Siphon Mind, draw three, one, two, three. Find our next land. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, Rot Tide Garganta, sacrificing Persistent Specimen. And like this, this, this series of events where you go initiative into Mass Edict effect has this really powerful effect of like reducing everybody's ability to aggress on you while also upgrading your creature from a 1-1 to a 5-4. So it's like, I don't know how exactly somebody gets through this unless they're planning on like killing my whole board, like spending all their removal so that they can get through with the one creature they've got. Um, so we're probably sitting on this. Next turn, everybody redeploys their threats because they really feel like they need to get the initiative. And on upkeep, we goad. We goad something. And now we can, now we have the ability to play the Skyfisher Spider to punish it even more. So we can go one, two, see how many black sources do we have here? Knight's Whisper, draw, draw. Excellent, we found our land. So we play out the land. And then we go one, two, three, four, five. Spider, sacking Spring Bloom Druid, killing a creature and making this new a 4 4. And then, um, ooh, I meant to not tap one of these. One, two. Oh, but we only have so much black mana. So yeah, I needed to do this so that I can leave up double black. One, one, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, you know what? Uh, I could do, well, I've got crop rotation, so I can make a black source. But here, we'll just, we'll just pretend we have to do it this way. We'll grasp the darkness something with this. And then upkeep, we are in goad. So we're gonna, we don't have anything we wanna sacrifice right now. So we're gonna draw. <sighs> Ugh. Make it stop. This is unreasonable. Like right now, we could go Crypt Rats and a Novice Occultist into wipe the board. Oh, it's a one, two, so we can't do that. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna go straight into the dungeon, uh, the Throne of the Dead Three. So we'll go one, two, <laughs> Greater Tanuki. You gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. Scrap work. Yo, okay, so we've got Finclade Fugitives, Scrapwork Rager, Caterpillar, Greater Tanuki. Who wants a 10-7? Partially unblockable. <laughs> Welcome to the ramp zone, baby. Yeah, it's turn seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten? Like, it's so much. It might seem weird, but I'm actually going to choose the Rager because this is gonna draw us like a ton of cards. And Finclave Fugitives is big, but we just want more cards right now. And this, like it doesn't, like Finclade Fugitives being big doesn't really like matter that much because it, this is gonna become big anyways. It's a five, five black creature. We draw a card when it ETBs. Now we're just like clapping the world's cheeks with our cards here. One, two, three, so we can go, um, a cultist. Um, yeah, we probably just go a cultist and then like 
I don't know if anybody can really attack us through here, but like we just go to our turn and we get another swamp. Noteworthy here, by the way, that I chose way too many forests when I was tutoring. You only need forests enough so that you can cast your ramp spells. You need a lot of black mana because that's like the meat and potatoes of your deck. So we get this thing here, we draw, we get a Golgari Rot Farm. We're gonna play the swamp though. And we'll go one, two, three, four. And like we're we're approaching the point where like a po opponent is going to concede. There is going to be a concession here soon. Um, we're gonna sacrifice this to draw a card, and then we're just gonna go one, two, three, four crypt rats, hold up crypt rats for um crypt rats for three, and this is game over. Like if somebody hasn't comboed, we've we've won the game. This is like turn eight. So that was good. Uh this hand seems great. We'll go uh mountain. Forest, go into Myconid, which is going to make a Sapperling. And we'll go to draw next turn. Um, we will go Cultivate for Swamp, two Swamps, like that. Uh, one's going to go into play tapped, one's going to be untapped. Then we will tap this at our end step to sacrifice this uh, token here to uh, draw two and make a treasure. Uh, let's see, treasure, make a treasure, draw two, and then we go and draw for our next turn. Swamp into, I mean, at this point we could even go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can go land into, yeah, I like this. We go land into Moan of the Unhallowed. Uh, oops, uh, making two zombie tokens. Moan of the Unhallowed is turning out to be really good. This is like pretty favorable for us. And then at end step, um, we just go pay three greater Tanuki, find a forest and draw that there. And then go to our turn. Okay, and this is where this is where we can deploy the Skyfisher Spider. Um, we probably attack, but Skyfisher Spider kill something, um, and then we've got four five mana to play with. So we probably just run out this Blood Seeker. And then I think end step, we're going to sacrifice the Skyfisher Spider with the Village Rites. So we go Village Rites, sack this, uh, put this into our command zone, draw to, oh yeah, now, now we're cooking with gas. Yeah, now we go one, two, three, uh, four. For Vicious Battle Rager. We're going to get a forest no we're gonna get a swamp swamp play the swamp one two three for lana war visionary one two three four for the falcon wrath noble and then we pass uh upkeep we're probably gonna go Scry 2. These cards are interesting. They allow us to recast the spider. I don't think I like Steve here. We're going to send Steve to the bottom, but we'll keep this on top um, and draw for turn. We'll go Tokasha's Dig Site, green for Wood Elves. We're going to go find a, is that a forest card? Oh, we don't have the duels in here yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll add those. This would be a dual land. Um, or Gingerbread Cabin. Yeah, we could have gotten Gingerbread Cabin with this. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Cast the Spider, sacking the Wood Elves, destroying another permanent. I mean, this is great. I love this. But how, okay, so we've proven that it works. We need to cut 12 cards though. 
or actually less than that because we're going to go it, it's less we go uh down down uh what's our balance of colors here it is mostly a black deck as i suspected something like that you need at least 10 green sources uh, we also need the dual lands, which are type land, uh, let's see, type forest, type swamp. So there's two of those. We're going to play both of them because we have some forest matters cards. So we'll shave a swamp and a forest. Okay, so 107 cards. We need to make cuts. I'm excited about the clay revenant because we have all this mana. So the idea that we can like bring back the clay revenant from the graveyard, recast it, edict send that thing to the graveyard, that's like really good. And it means that we can also do some really powerful loops with Tortured Existence, where we can pitch Tortured Existence, uh, pitch it into the graveyard with Tortured Existence, bring it back, and we're always gonna have a source of things to swap, and we're never gonna feel like we're swapping things into the graveyard that we actually wanna cast. Oh, Command Tower, thank you. Genius. So we can actually cut a... What are we cutting for this? Is it a swamp? Maybe it's a forest? It's basically, it's a forest, right? Like, I'm not even sure we need gingerbread cabin, you know? It's a nice thing to just like have, but uh, you know, we're ramping enough that we, we're finding forests all the time. Gingerbread cabin's fine, we, we can just play this card. Also, just as a heads up, you guys might not know this, but, um, but uh, ooh, that is really pretty. Oof. Oof. Wow. Um, the uh, new 40K cards from the 40K set, which was amazing, by the way. Uh, personally, I just love it. The new 40K cards do not show up in the card readers on Spell Table right now. So if you're using those in your deck and you're playing in my games, just make sure to take those and switch the printing because... I can't, I rely on the card readers and it's, it's not been working lately, so. Okay, we need to cut seven cards. Uh, removal felt like we were pretty solid in those games. Um, I felt like we were drawing a metric fuck ton of cards. Just so many, so many cards. So maybe first fear Garganta gets cut. I really liked these creatures that drew a card. Like this one's amazing, you know, like if it, it, it can just block with death touch or it's kind of unblockable in a sense because they don't want to give you a card. They probably do give you a card if they want the, you know, want to keep what they're playing, you know, badly enough. But I um, felt like we had a lot of ramp, which felt really good. Like ramp is where this kind of came alive, right? So maybe we just cut Bloodseeker and just accept that we don't have we don't have like a huge package for preventing combo. Maybe, maybe that's what we do. Five more cards. Huntmaster seems insane. <laughs> like Chris says that, yeah, there's a bunch of pretty retro art cards like the Springleaf Drum. I bought all of them. They're just so, mm, so nice, chef's kiss. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the new retro art cards are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Uh, man, Monarch and Initiative, like we can never cut those cards from this deck, right? Like ever. Um, is Llanowar Visionary here under ramp? It is. Myco Underseller Myconid is as well. Do we have all the ramp? I'm trying to find an excuse to like cut a ramp spell. No. Oh man. Gary, so good. Could cut Broken Wings. Just seems bad. Maybe we need to look at the draw. We have 24 draw spells, like, come on. Maybe, um, maybe Spore Crawler doesn't make it, and maybe, Bequeathal seems really good, right? Bequeathal's got to be good.
Damn, this is so painful, chat. I need your help. Ugh. <laughs> Prop rotation's amazing. It's gotta come out of here. It, like, has to. I, you know, may, maybe, is it possible that we cut draw spells that don't sacrifice or don't provide a body? Yeah, FP says, once I heard, if you draw more cards, you'll probably win the game. I do agree. Um, I think that more cards is more options. It's hitting your mana. It's it's hitting other draw spells. It's hitting you know things that draw you more cards. It's like increasing the consistency of finding your initiative and your monarch. It's really good, yeah, for sure. Um, so here's the heresy that I'm proposing. What if we cut Sign in Blood and Knight's Whisper? This is not the first deck where I've done this before. Two cards for two mana. Alternatively, I could consider cutting Siphon Mind. Maybe Siphon Mind is just too much of a top end. The discard doesn't really matter. It's just incidental. Maybe because Sign and Blood and Night's Whisper are two cards for two mana, then maybe that's better than Siphon Mind. Um, but like, I don't want to cut any of the creatures that draw me cards. That's like my main thing. Like they all, like they're all feeding the plan, you know? Um, so I'm gonna cut Siphon Mind. Big heresy, big heresy. Like Exquisite Huntmaster is fucking cracked, right? We just like, it makes so many bodies. It's uh, eight bodies. Eight bodies on one card. Thin Clade Fugitives is also really good. This is just a 7-4. Oh, God, chat. Only, this is like, this is like the Yorian of CPDH. Like, <laughs> we would totally play a 120 card deck if we could. And it would be better for it, probably. Um, that may not be entirely true, but so bequeathal, the thing has to die for us to draw these cards, right? So if something has to die for us to draw those cards, is it as good or would this be better as, um, altars reap? Oh, sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice, oh, draw. Oh, uh, we, we want color equals black, though. Oh, man, there's other ones, too. Oh, there's a Static Awakener. <sighs> Chat, this is so savage. Altars Reap. So... We are absolutely playing a Static Awakener. If you don't know, if you don't know, you're gonna know. This is like maybe one of my favorite cards maybe ever printed. I, it's so unreasonable. It's just like, I don't know why I like it so much, but like the pal in me just gets so hard when I see this. And it's because of this flavor text right here. Bone split, flesh split asunder, and the screams of euphoric agony Gave away to unholy laughter. <sighs> God, it's good. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Draws you a card. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, the other card that's really good here, too, would be... Um, I mean, like, Altar's Reap could be better. No, I think we do want Bequeathal. Bequeathal's so cheap. There's also Crypt Lurker. You can sack a creature, draw a card. For um, with this effect here, that's pretty cool. But it's also like we don't want stuff that's sacrificing our own stuff unless it's 
like yeah i don't i don't think that's what we want to be doing okay so i think what we're going to do now is we're going to take the worst of the cards that we have because we're we're all good cards it's all it's all good cards right like everything here is gas um maybe even a static awakener doesn't make it cuz a static awakener is like taxing our creatures which is maybe fine because it is drawing us a card. So it's kind of like half of a village rights that makes a 4-4. Four four. Pretty good. This is, this is making me think Bayou Groff is actually pretty savage in this deck too. Like if you go two mana Bayou, Bayou Groff, sack a creature that wants to die and draws a card. Maybe we go down on... Yeah, I do want Bayou Groff in here. He is the goodest boy. Little two mana five four. We don't even have a Gurmag Angler in here. It's crazy, man. I don't think Gurmag Angler would be good. We only have twenty six. Um, only have twenty six instants and sorceries, which actually is like pretty decent. That's pretty decent. FP saying, do you need mana dorks? I think you can cut. Well, we don't really have a ton of mana dorks. We just have guys that come into play and get us a land. And I have to admit, like, I think that when we were, when we were testing this, right, the game that looked the most insane was the one where we went turn two primal druid into turn three primal growth. That was fucking crazy. Like, imagine we go turn two Steve, sack him, get our land. Uh, turn three, we go, um, you know, cultivate or something like that. And we're like, we're really ahead on mana. And that's like turn three, five lands. And we have so much to do with our mana. Sounds horrible. Lol. Yeah, d Big Dirty, I feel you. I mean, I don't know if you saw that, like the gameplay testing that we did with this just a moment ago, but it was, it was fast. See, the reason I don't want to cut Visionary is Visionary is just better Phyrexian Rager. It's just better Phyrexian Rager. It's drawing a card, it's making mana, it doesn't lose its life. You know what I mean? I know what you're saying, like, like cut some creatures maybe that draw cards. Like, this is the inflated part of the deck right now. But the, the problem that I'm running into is that I don't want to cut these creatures that draw cards because they're also the fodder for the other things we're doing, right? We want to be able to do that. So let's let's cut a static awakener. Um, let's cut a single. We could cut sanitarium skeleton and keep clay revenant. Maybe we don't want two of those. I mean, they're pretty cool to like hit one of those, but we draw a lot of cards. We can we can ditch this. I like the way clay revenant looks. It's very cool. Um, Spring Bloom Druid was good. I think we want all the ramp creatures at ETB. Filigree Familiar feels like it's going to be really good in this deck too. I'm kind of stoked on that. Um, I think we could potentially cut one of these. We don't need three naturalized effects in the deck. We're going to cut Broken Wings. I love Broken Wings, but I don't think we need it. Um, man, this is like the most draw spells I've played in a deck in a long time. There's a fuckload of draw. <laughs> I'm not cutting Scrapwork Ranger. I'm just saying it. I know that I know in my heart that this is probably the cut, but the unearth is so good in this deck. And I won't do it. Maybe Biograph doesn't. Maybe it doesn't do. Yeah. Let's be disciplined about it here. We're gonna be disciplined except for the Scrapwork Ranger. I think the Scrapwork Ranger, there's a good argument to keep it in the deck. Um, and then we need one more cut. Uh, which could be a draw spell. So let's just cut um, Sign and Blood. Whoa! Chat. We done did it. Claps in chat for you all uh, sticking with me here and for getting us down to 100 cards. <laughs> you guys are heroes.
such fortitude sitting around helping me build this deck. Most impressive. 100 cards. Let's take it through a couple more play tests here. And then what I would like to do actually, and this is a first, but you know what? I think that we should play a game of magic. We should play, we should take the stream from deck building. We should take the stream from deck building the thing and then playing a game with it. Who in chat would like to play a game with the tryhards right now? We'll just go straight into it. Chris says, now it's my turn. I got three cuts left from 150 and it's getting hard. I'm sorry, Chris. Well, you know, Chris, um, you know, if you're ever interested, uh, just throw this out there and you're looking for a way to support what we're doing. We do, um, we, are, we, we have a structure currently for doing deck submissions. So if you have a deck that you wanna submit, you and I would hop and chat together uh, on a Monday or a Thursday, and you and I would work together with chat and we would get it down to 100 cards. So we would do this process basically with a deck that you've got. And uh, you can take advantage of some of my knowledge here and take advantage of the chat and get some, some vibes for, for what you're building there. Um, so yeah, let me know if that's interesting to you. We can talk on DM about that and I can tell you what my rate is and everything. But um, who here wants to play a game right now? We could literally transition right now into playing a game where you guys could see the uh, Sky Fisher Spider in action. I'm gonna crack a window. Chris is in. He is in. Chris, are you in the what, what's your what's your name in in uh, in Discord? I, you're, you're in the chat every single time. And I was just like, I was realizing I didn't know who you were in Discord. I probably interact with you regularly. Either that or the PDH uh, home base, one of the two. I wish I could move my chat over to, um, to the other side of my screen so that I wasn't like looking away from you all when I was looking at this. So we got two more spots. We got Chris has got one. Um, I'm gonna put out an LFG thing here in, uh, in Discord. And you will have uh, limited time. Our disc, our, 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 I'm giving you all chat the first dibs on these spots as a thank you for being here. Uh, but if I go and I do L at, L at LFG, I will get two people like that. So let me know. You got, you got a minute here. I'm going to queue up this uh, CPDH LFG. For those of you that haven't participated yet, the Tryhards Discord server is unbelievably good for finding games. It's great for building decks. It's a really supportive environment. If you really like the idea of playing with Planeswalkers or with commons in the command zone, whether they be creatures or backgrounds, we're totally open to that. We're doing a lot of the experimentation around that. So if you're not part of the server, go into the video description and there's a link there to join it. It's really worth it. It's where most of the CPDH games are happening right now, like worldwide. Um, I would venture to guess. I think there's probably other places too, but a lot of the tournaments that I've seen that were big were like one-time things, and they were for PDH as a whole, not for CPDH specifically. All right, I'm gonna drop a LFG here. Chris says, Lucifer 99, uh, Luc Lucifer, I like it, Lucifer. 99, I'm in the Discord, I just haven't interacted much, and that wasn't a volunteer. Sorry, I don't have my online play set up to put, out, uh, to put a game out right now, I just wanna see a game. Awesome, that is just fine. And let me know too, um, if you do end up doing a, like some sort of a, a, deck, um, a, a deck workshop kind of a thing, and I can also give you a little bit of tutoring on how to get your OBS and your spell table set up, because once you've got that, the world is your oyster. There is something so liberating about being able to tune your deck and immediately play it and make the changes. Yay, we've got Puzzle Box. Let's fucking go. I love this guy. Puzzle Box is in. Uh, three slots. Okay, so he is number two. Okay. Hmm. 
Hey, hey, Puzzle, how you doing? Can you hear me? I can. How's it going? Let's see. Oh, you know what? My my uh, my headphones just went just went dead here. I think uh, there, Puzzle, you uh, hear me? Oh, hey, there he is. I, good, there we go. good. I'm so glad you joined. Cool. Um, so we're going to be looking for two more people, and we're going to take the deck that we just built live, the Skyfisher Spider. And we're going to run it through a game for these fine folks who are still watching. Um, yeah, have you? Uh, you just got off work, right? So you haven't seen what we built. Correct. Ooh, spicy biscuit. Well, uh, if you hop in the video, you'll be able to see. It. I've got it kind of listed up here right now. I'm actually going to add the link to Skyfisher Spider to the video description so that you all can track this. Uh, Big Dirty says the two drop draws can really fix early game hands. And they are never bad. Tough cuts, really tough cuts. Yeah, I agree. The thing is, Big Dirty, you're, you're absolutely right. But we have 21 draw spells. 21 draw spells. And some of these are like big ones, you know, like, you know. So I think, I think we're going to be fine on cards. So it's just a matter of sometimes you get to a point where it's like, what is the next worst card? And we're prioritizing having a body. And we're prioritizing... Um, and, and, and because of that, we're, I think that's why I chose to cut the sign in blood. So yeah. Um, so we'll do sky fisher spider in the description here. There we go. Bingo. So you all can see, yeah, really tough cuts. That was, uh, that was ruthless. We had to get very honest with ourselves about what the best cards were there. Um, I got some of the new removal, huh? <laughs> uh, sorry, what did you say? You said uh, the new removal? Yeah, the the new black removal spell. Yep, yep. Overwhelming remorse is disgusting in this deck. We have thirty seven creatures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna that be that card is disgusting in general, but especially in that yeah. kind of deck. Yeah, overwhelming <laughs> remorse is another card that sort of like pulls us in the direction of like three mana kill spells because I think overwhelming remorse is probably three mana most of the time. Um, in this deck and in Corpse Auger, it's probably more like two and one. Uh, Pod just said, did I just cut, hear cut, sign in blood? You did, Jonathan. You did. Uh, I got to be honest, I am all about the heresy up in here. I'm not cutting this card because just, just for shits and giggles, it's like we, we have just better things to be playing. You know, I think I do actually want stuff like Novice Occultist and Guild Sworn Prowler and Dusk Legion Zealot over that because it's giving us the necessary bodies to upgrade when we use Edicts and to kill things with Skyfisher Spider. The situation I don't want to get into is where the Skyfisher Spider doesn't have like food that I actually want to sacrifice. That's what I don't want to get into. That being said though, we have to keep in mind that like reusing the initiative and the mo like in particularly initiative, but reusing initiative cards by sacrificing them and bringing them back with um Tortex is like very, very fucking good. <laughs> it's powerful, powerful magic. Um okay. So we are just waiting for two more. No one from chat. Huh? Yeah, we haven't got anybody from chat yet. Not the chat is uh, enjoying see. This is one of my favorite <laughs> things to say, but uh, let the boy watch. <laughs> and the, 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 the partner meme that goes along with it is Jerry just likes to watch. Uh, Sign and Blood is also a shock versus Night's Whisper. Can kill someone. Yep, it can. The number of times I've done that is very small. It's relevant in Witherbloom Apprentice, but uh, this is not a deck that is going to be pressuring people's life total that hard. Um, maybe the flexibility is good. Uh, we've got Tony Baloney. I can jump in for a game in a couple minutes. My man, my man. 
Love it. Tony Baloney, you got it. Hop on in, baby. Once you're into the Discord, jump into Lounge, and then I will abuse my admin privileges to drag you over into the hidden recording booth so you can, uh, so you can play this game. We got, we got looking for one more. We're getting there. We are. Yep. Uh, let's see who else we can get in on this. What about Islane? I bet Islane is trying to get in on this. Where's where's my boy Islane? Oh, Morgana is on. Did you, did they just post? Did they just get the slide? Yep. All right. Number four. We got. We have got a pod. Let Let's go. Morgana, my friend. Welcome to the live stream. Everyone, welcome Morgana, an esteemed member of our Tryhards community, avid oh. deck brewer, enjoyer of combo and other things. <laughs> Mostly combo. Let's Mostly let's combo, go. yeah. We'll be very clear about that. Um, a large majority. <laughs> yeah, a large majority combo. But um, one of the things that you're working on is Rocco, which uh, has the um, the the beauty of being a deck that can kind of uh, have an effective pivot later on. So um, not just combo, not just combo. Yeah. All right. So we're going to be waiting for uh, for Tonus to get in here, and then we're going to start the game up. I am going to take a brief moment here to get my OBS set up for this game, and then we will uh, then we'll get rocking here. Uh, so, do it, take this moment uh, while we've got a pause here to thank all of you in chat right now for sticking with us and for just in, imbibing the content. We've got nine likes on this video. I really appreciate it when you all do that. Uh, it just really gives me that validation to know that, yep, we're doing the right thing. People are enjoying what we're doing. Um, and I really appreciate you all being here. It's just, it's, it's a real joy to produce this kind of content, especially when people are are showing up and uh, and engaging in the uh, in the uh, in the game. So, thank you very much. Okay, so we got recording spell table. We're gonna do Moxfield playtest streaming. Okay. So before we get into this, what kind yes. of what kind of deck do you want the spider to go up against? Oh, you you do whatever your heart desires. Ideally, uh -huh. ideally the spider should be able to. Got to be able to tangle with everything. So, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever tickles your fancy. I'm thinking full combo, full combo table, full combo table. Oh god! <laughs> oh god! So oh, I'm god. thinking I pull out the DDD uh, partial beast list. Okay. Yeah, you uh, could really try that it through its paces. Sure. Yeah, I I want to I want to put the new stuff through its paces. You know, let's let's see how it does when it's a uh, challenge. Yep. Sure. Cool. Um, Oh yeah, you do need to know what we're playing for your stream stuff. Oh you? no, don't worry about Are that. Are you leaving the thumbnail the same? Yeah, right? we're gonna leave the thumbnail the same. Yeah, we don't even need to make a thumbnail because we're we're already live. So, yeah. Yep, that works. Yeah, we had a very uh, avid uh, Golgari enjoyer group here today. Sixty-two percent of the people wanted Skyfisher Spider, which means next week will be Third Path Iconoclast on Monday. Uh, that'll be a that's that's gonna be a fucking banger. That's also going to be agonizing. <laughs> like, I was going to say, I yeah. didn't remember too many good cards from the new set for commanders, but there there were a few that were pretty good. Yeah, so. there's like three or four. There's really like two yeah. amazing ones, which are Skyfisher Spider and the Iconoclast. But like, um, and then there's Yoshin Tactician, which I think somebody will play and it'll probably be good. Um, and we'll build that one at some point too. Okay, so edits to this deck real quick, so don't mind. I got Tonus in here. Oh, you got Tonus. Tonus, are you here? Yep. Glad hey, here. glad to have you here. Thank you for uh, thanks for coming and joining. Glad to, glad to get a game in with you. Uh, could one of you open the spell table link, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. Sure thing. Let's get this going. I need to close some programs down. My computer is struggling right now. Can 
Would you would you imagine that the uh, things are getting better as I close down the programs here? Um, possibility storm. We gotta get the music back going here. Oh, it's nope. in the uh, chat for the. But we gotta be careful the to. Voice channel. Gotta be careful we don't play something and on stream that isn't uh, that hasn't been attributed. Gotta be careful about that. Okay. Um, cool. And we're gonna go into playtest here. Um, and don't look. Don't look at my opening hand. I'm showing you guys my opening hand. Don't don't look at it. <laughs> Look away. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm doing an edit real quick. Okay, cool. Um, we'll bring this over right. here and we'll go spell table. Uh, do we have a spell table link up yet? Yeah, it's in the chat for the voice channel. Okay. Great. Got to get that epic music going here for, for uh, the game. And for those of you interested in making your own uh, content, you should know that White Bat Audio is a really great place to get copyright free music. Do you love me some copyright free music? Mm hmm. Um, we're going to switch this over to, uh, let's see, recording spell table. And then we're going to switch this over. Oh, actually, we can go. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show my face during the game, but that is just fine. We'll go start virtual camera and we'll go, let's see, magic card. Yeah, we'll just we'll just do that for now. Join. OK. Great, so we've got Sky Fisher Spider. There we go. Link is in the recording booth chat. So if you go and you hover over recording booth, there will be a little chat sign there, and then that's where it's posted. I can ping you there if you can't find it. Gretchen Titch Willow. Gross. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, Give me a moment. Right, Big okay. Dirty says, sounds like you all are jumping right into the deep end. Good luck, everyone. Well, thank you, Dirty. Yeah, man, we're we're gonna yeah, we're gonna make it happen. This is the best way to do it. You get the deck built and you put it through the paces right away. Um, bah, bah. And it once is you not all are letting in, me ping you here for some reason. Uh, what's that? Maybe it's because you don't. It's not letting me ping Taunus. Can they not see it? If they're not like, if they don't have access to the chat, oh, that could the be channel. A, I'm gonna send it to I'll Thomas just, then in message. Yeah, I can send it to Morgana. I was gonna say it's not letting me ping them, so. Okay, yeah, that the they, they might not be able to see the the chat, right? Yeah, it, because um, sorry, I'm I'm. Um... I'm currently getting a rules clarification for an edit that I'm making to the yeah. parcel beast list because I don't actually have a personalized parcel beast list and I want personalized parcel beast list. Okay. Um, let's focus on just getting in the game as soon as possible. Yep. And we'll just and just we'll just rock it from there. Yeah, the problem is uh, this needs to happen before the game happens. Okay. I'm working on it. We'll just put uh, Spider right here in this big zone. It's kind of awkward, but... Um, oh, I guess I could just go download a Spider um, image, right? Sky Fisher. There you are, okay. Uh, PNG, good. And then we go here. We open this magic card. Okay, say, I'm not getting calling for it in a reasonable amount of time. I think I'm just gonna. Yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll just play with what we got. We're all. We're, I'm. I'm running something untested, so we'll be okay. Um. Hmm. I just downloaded it. Where did it go? This your first time on Parcel Beast, Morgan? 
No, it's my second, but I don't have a... I don't have a personalized list for Frost of Beast, so... There we I go. mean, that's fine. The database list should work, right? <laughs> it has specific choices that I disagree with, so yeah. I'm just going to... And that's uh, fine. The, the funny... Oh my god, we've got double Gretchen. Guys, I, I think oh, I'm, gonna, I think I'm absolutely going to lose. <laughs> I am absolutely going to lose. <laughs> Oh mid god. Okay. Okay. So mid-range mid-range double comb triple combo. This you is You may not because here's the thing. Well, yes, we are triple combo. What we are is two late game combo decks versus an aggressive combo deck and you being mid-range. Yeah, could be. You can probably just ignore me and focus on those two because we'll see. they I'll randomize three times. Yeah, randomize this up. Two. And then Tonus, would you get yourself three. to uh, 30 life or 40 life points? Look at how janky my interface is right now. All that beautiful work mm -hmm. to make it perfect, and it's just like, uh, <laughs> it's like partially it's kind small. of disgusting looking. <laughs> for for those of you that don't know, having two instances of OBS up can break your computer. <laughs> so someday mm -hmm. I'll get my shit together and get Stream Decker, but I don't really have the money for that subscription right now. And once I've got the Stream Decker, then I'm gonna have a soundboard because I've got an extra cell phone. And I'll have a soundboard with fun sounds, and we'll be able to we'll do all sorts of stuff like "It's a trap" and um, other fun movie quotes, as well as being able to do screen changes and scene changes with a button instead of all this. Okay, are we good to go? I've got a hand. My first seven looks great, so I'm just I'm good. Keep second seven. I'm not sure who built this deck. If it was Crash or Yale, or on, but I'm very annoyed at them. <laughs> Well, you have to understand, like, every deck is built for the meta that it plays in to a degree. Like, I tend to build my decks for an open meta because we have a very open meta in the tryhards. But I'm, I'm the... saying he's missing hes missing a core card in this deck. Oh, what's he missing? Aether Spellbomb. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, he's missing Aether Spellbomb, and that's kind of important. It is a good uh... one in this, in this, in this setting here. All right, uh, are we ready to go? Oh, well. Did I get, oh, well. I, I get to go first? Oh, looks like you do. do. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm just going to get us started then. We're going to go Witherbloom Campus and pass. And remember to leave the cards out for a moment so I can click them and make sure chat can see exactly what we're doing here. Do, 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 it is a way to win the game. It is a way to I'll win the game. I'll play an island and pass. And the, and the parcel beast list is Yelrons. All right, Yelron, I am very unhappy. <laughs> I'm going to play a forest, and I'm going to open up my turn by paying two life. Probe. Get probe. So I'm going to get probe puzzle. I think. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and reveal it to everyone because I'll I'll just be telling everyone. Oh, unless you don't okay. want to. I mean, you don't have to. You can choose to block them. That's and true. And then they'll just have to trust me on my word. But it's easier to yeah. reveal to everyone. I don't care that much. Um. <laughs> oh, God. What is this hand? Okay. Oh, no. Oh no, color me very concerned. So is that a careful no, that's not a care that's an undergrowth. This is an overgrowth. Or overgrowth. Overgrowth, yeah. land and tapper, gush, and drift. I holy shit, man. Yeah, this is some powerful cards. Uh no, that is that is straight up like he needs to untap with his land untapper, and then it goes into Wait. Is that untapped target land? Yeah, that what? is. So what uh, is that overgrowth? It is. Yeah, that is overgrowth. overgrowth. That's so, uh, that's one. That um, I it's not quite go infinite. I can make infinite green. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, is, is that it? Uh, yeah, and then I'll go ahead and draw my card. So just to be clear, that was overgrowth, gush, drift yep. of phantasms, an untapper. So. Uh, Yep, a, Blossom uh, Dread. And Blossom Dread, yeah, okay, cool. Is, is that it? I'll pay a green, I'll uh, use it. Yeah, card. that, a bounce land, and two other lands. 
And pass. Okay, cool. And make sure to leave those cards out so I can click them. I got that one. Um, okay, so I will draw for turn. Um, yeah, looks good. I'll play Swamp uh, or Forest. That's a cool looking, <laughs> it's a cool looking Swamp. I'll pass the turn. Okay. Okay. Go. Big Dirty saying, love Gretchen. Yeah. I'm going to get a poll going here. <laughs> Gretchen C1. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just closing out the... Uh... Then I'm going to cast Green. And Wild Growth, my guild gate. Yep. And I will pass. I don't want something a little more hyper than what we got going here. Yeah, yeah something a little more hype. Giga hype. Let's yeah. go ahead and play an island. And I will pass. Okay, go to my turn. I'm going to also play an island. And I'm going to go ahead and pay free cast a trinket mage. Yep. Hey. Getting a Viridian Longbow. No. And while you're searching... An Aether Spell Ball. Aether Spell, yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is also a combo piece. Damn, this is going to be a fast game. Okay. Faster. All right. I will uh, draw for turn. I will play the Swamp. And we're going to go... Underseller Myconid. And I'm going to make a sapling and pass. And a cat. The three. We're going to lay Druid up there. Lay Druid. <laughs> My god. And pass. Here we go. Oh, no, that's I land on Tapper. I am so scared. This is like a very terrifying pod. I'll play a command tower and a blossom dryad. Yep. And then I'll pass. Go Gross. And pray Morgana doesn't win this turn. Play an island. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I can life spark spell bomb in one of my lands, put yep. Parcel Beast on that land and pass the turn and Parcel Beast stays on that land, correct? I believe yes. so. I believe okay. so, yeah. I might be wrong Good. on that. Um, if there's any big brain people Definitely in chat who want to review top, that. if it's right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, I can play this island. I should play this. Well, no, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So, Life Spark Spell Bomb. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and cast Life Spark Spell Bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't actually name what I was going to be naming with Utopia Spell, That's but fine. I'm going to be naming blue. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's the traditional color. Uh, I'm going to pay a green, and I'm going to go ahead and crack this Life Spark Spell Bomb to make my Utopia Sprawl uh, creature until end of turn. Yep. And then I'm going to attempt to mutate Parcel Beast onto. Actually, no, I can't do that. So Life Spark Spell Bomb animating a land. Actually, I can't do that because. Oh yeah, you, you're one mana I short. Can't actually, you can't actually cast Parcel Beast. Yeah. Okay. So Spell Bomb. So yeah, I guess it's just going to be Spell Bomb and. Pass. Okay. I want a land very badly here. Fuck. <laughs> I messed up. Yeah, I messed up my land drop. Um, let's see. And, and I should have played the forest instead of the island. I'm gonna go yeah. and lay druid. Okay. Um, I'm gonna swing the sapperling at you, Tonis. Oh. Uh, one one on tapper. <laughs> okay. Um, then I will uh, pay one for. Uh, bequeathal on nice. my sapperling and then pay three for primal growth kicked god this is fucking gas yep 
All right, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I might just die, but like I need to, I need to do this. So uh, first things first is we're going to get this additional cost. We're going to sacrifice this token. We're going to draw two cards and then I'm going to go yep. uh, forest. I think I'm going to go forest, forest, right? No forest and then a swamp. Oh, uh, swamp. Those are untapped, by the way. They are untapped. Isn't that amazing? Woo. Uh, yeah, it's a fat, fast ramp there. Um, and then I am going to play this sad mortuary mire, and then I will pass the turn. Man, I hate that land. Yep. You hate yep. that land? Yeah. It does put the combo players in the dumpster when the creatures are important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Usually just feels too slow for me. You know every deck I play, though. Loves that. Yeah, you just do. Tap one for a relic. Yep. <laughs> and we will pass. Relic doesn't help that much considering how much on the board combo is currently on the field, but you know, it's a card. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. It's a um... card. <laughs> None of y'all get to complain right now. <laughs> I'll float three. I'll play a Simic Growth Chamber, bouncing this command tower. Gross. I'll use my three to cast Overgrowth, targeting this bounce land. Yep. Wow. Um. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm passing priority. I'm passing. You have it. Pass Alrighty. It. Tap the Dryad, targeting the bounce land. Yep. That's priority. Um. Alrighty. I'll make three oh. green and a blue. Uh, Answer that. I was waiting on Ryan. Sorry. Oh, go no. for it. Do your own tap. Um, I'm going to tap my Gilgate for a blue and a green. Tap to untap it. And this is with the overgrowth on the stack? No, this is untap with the untap on, on the stack. stack. Mm, okay. Well, on top of the stack. Yep. Um, and then tap for another blue and a green. And <laughs> I think instead of bouncing the overgrowth, I'm going to capsize your land. Yeah, I figured. Wow. Um, That's hmm. fucking savage. How, like, what are the chances that you, like, in. gush into foil? Or to, yeah, I'm or considering days. it, but I, I don't think it's worth it, because I just lose at that point. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that yep, would be a pretty uh, pretty big dick move there, Puzzle, but I'm glad you didn't, for your sake. Yeah, we saw how it worked out last time. Um, I will just pass my turn. Okay, go to my turn. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and play this year Forest. I'm gonna crack life spark show bomb, making my utopia sprawl into a free free creature. Is that good? Uh what are you doing, sir? I'm cracking spell bomb making my Oh I see. Utopia yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm going to tap that to attempt to cast my mutate creature onto my land. Okay, so for those of you that haven't seen the uh overly complex parcel beast deck, uh he is animating a land mutate parcel based onto a creature that is also a land that taps for mana and this produces some really powerful effects so there you go you got it um uh, yeah that is a parcel beast that taps for two uh ryan you're good yep okay uh i think i'm gonna go ahead and move to combat and swing to it ryan yep i'll take two pass turn um, and then the partial beast becomes a land now, correct? Not a creature. Wait, like I, I would assume it's a would creature. I, would I be? I think I can mutate it underneath. 
Oh boy, here we are playing. Uh... This this here was the rules the rules question that I wanted to know. I mean, I'm going to be doing. All that. right, another rules question for Jonathan, who just answered another one before. Uh, mutate does stay on the temporary creature that the life uh, life spark spell bomb creates. The question is, uh, does it remain a creature, or does it? I just, think if you mutate it... underneath, it would be a land, and if you mutate on top, it would be a creature. Is my guess. Ideally, I'd like to mutate underneath because if I can mutate underneath, then it stays a creature and or it stays a land. We need and I to go to look up Parcel Beast and. Oh yeah, no, no. I I decided yeah. to I decided to break everything here. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm currently looking at the uh, primer. To All see. right. Odd says that's how it works. Okay, that is how it works. Good. This is why we've got chat. What puzzle said? Cool. Um, so that yeah. means that what are you, are you trying to make it a land or are you trying to make I'm it? I'm trying a... to make it a land. Okay, so at end step, um, I'm going to cast down, targeting the um, the parcel beast before it becomes a uh, land. Counter spell. Yep, that's fine. Uh, leave that counter spell no. out there. Okay. We tried. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, this is me placing responsibility on you all. To figure this shit out, okay? Got it. Thanks. Hey, you you saw my hand. Good. Good talk. Good talk. <laughs> you know I don't have interaction. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Tonus, looks like you're up, my dude. Uh, <laughs> um. So it's a land now. It is a land now. One of the oh, hardest types that, to interact uh, with in CPDH. Imagine if oh, you can get I, that cap size back. Ima <laughs> imagine uh, that I could hit lands. Uh, that would be dumb. But um, okay, uh, we're gonna go. Let's see. What am I doing right now? Uh. Does blowing up the Utopia Sprawl help me at all? Um, I don't know if it does. One, two, three, four. Uh, not particularly. One, two, three, think. four, five, six, seven, I have. Um, so I can go one. Okay, so if I go one, two, three, find a land, play it. One, two, three, four, five. Prowler. No, it doesn't doesn't work. Um, so if I go one, two, three, land comes into play, tapped, untapped. Then I have five. Cast this, can't do that. Okay. So I think what I need to do is go one, two, uh, feral prowler. One, yeah. two, three, four. Or, or spider. Yep. All right. I'm going to sacrifice the feral prowler to the to the spider, and I'm going to target the. Um, uh, I think it's the Utopia Sprawl. I don't really know. Uh, to be honest, I'm going to express some ignorance here. Does Parcel Beast rely on being able to make multiple mana for that land? Is that like a big part of it? Um, it is a freed. Uh, I think it plays freed and yeah. bouncing, like banishing knack combos. Huh. Yes. However, I can't currently banishing knack due to the fact that Parse Beast is. Okay, I'm going to destroy yeah. the. Um, I'm going to destroy the Utopia Sprawl. That is fair. Utopia with uh, with the spider, and then I'm going to draw a card with the Feral Prowler because I did that, um, and then I will um, go to my end step and pass turn. And yeah, it is It is still very relevant to destroy the Utopia Sprawl because um, basically the combo yeah. right now is I get a land untapper on the field and then I put the um, the Freed from the Real onto mm -hmm. the yeah. land untapper. Yeah. So Jonathan says land creature underneath will make the parcel beast uh, with land text. This is crazy. His commander is just a land forever now. Yeah, basically. Look, uh, man. Hey, it's really hard to interact with. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is like huge punish for me cutting uh, Monvuli Acid Moss for my deck when I'm playing against <laughs> fucking triple <laughs> Simic land deck. <laughs> this is a massive punish. Massive yeah. punish. I am cutting. I am cutting a card and putting that card back in. <laughs> for the Simic matchup. Maybe I'll just add Reap and Sow as well, just to 
just to ensure you know that maximum salt is inflicted. <laughs> so, are you running unstable obelisk? No. I think you should be. Mm, maybe. Yeah. I think unstable obelisk is one of the uh, one of the like core three drop like the 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 litany the five three drop mana rocks that I think mm -hmm. can go into. I'll cut obelisk when you can find me a slot for it. What are you doing, Tonus? What you got? Oh, I'm gonna tap and I'm gonna play Gretchen. I'm good with Gretchen. If is Ryan, I can find slots for a lot of things. The question <laughs> is, are they slots That's that true. you are willing to cut? Potentially not. All right, exactly. what you got, Puzzle? Uh... I imagine Puzzle's got crippling depression from the fact that he's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> uh, Let's be realistic here. You know what? what Was I find it deserved? Yes. Uh, <laughs> but... You know, it's pretty funny because, like, in the same vein, I was just talking to Morgana about a really cancerous mono blue Tron deck that I built in Popper at one point, where the plan was to, like, turn three gone missing somebody's crew land. And uh, that's, like, kind of exactly what happened. Summit Growth Chamber, yep. cool. Yeah, the one blue floating. Bounce floating blue. Mm -hmm. uh, untap the bounce land, question mark. Pass priority on untap. Yep, pass priority. Go for it. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and cast a trinket mage. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that good? Does Gretchen run Life Spark Spellbomb? Or does Life Spark Spellbomb only target lands you control? I don't think he does. That's not part of his combo. Yeah, this that I do not. Relic probably or Spellbomb, one of the two. Like Aether. Yeah, I run but nobody's Aether dying spell anytime long. soon, so it could be land. Just find a land. Does Gretchen run uh yeah, Gretchen does run. So I feel like you could run uh, Life Spark Spell Bomb because you can get, like, in this position, he gets Life Spark Spell Bomb. If he was in this position, he gets Life Spark Spell Bomb. He can activate it to make his Growth Chamber a creature, yep. tutor for the Freed from the Real, and then spell get bomb. I'm getting the Aether. Yep. Aether Spell Bomb. Cool. Yep. And then spell Bomb's good. It. I'll go ahead and put it into play. Yep. Uh, no else? mana to activate it, correct? No mana to activate. All right. All right. My God, I love that word. All right, go to my yep. turn. I'm going to play this. Ooh, I love this song. Island. Mm. 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 And I just feel I'm that it's better than dip discarding. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to storm. Yep. Let's draw three. Right. Yeah, my only targets are Aether Spellbomb and Expedition Map. Questions, questions, questions. So I think I can put you and you back. Yeah, so that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you back. I'm going to put you back. I'm going to pay a green cast this year arbor elf yep you yep would you separate that arbor arbor elf a little bit thank you for the card reader bingo chat is like completely dilute oh no okay i was about to say chat's delusional but no chat chat's voted that gretchen Actually, is going to win this game i want <laughs> this back on top <laughs> Originally, it was Spider, and I was like, somebody's smoking some good stuff. <laughs> I'll go ahead and pass the turn. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll uh, draw for turn. Go Swamp. Um. Hmm. No one 
to um two three four cultivate yeah cultivate's fine mm -hmm. by me so we're gonna Good go green. forest and we're gonna go swamp Um, we're gonna keep put the forest in play, and we're gonna put the swamp in hand. Um, I will go to combat with the spider. Yep. And I'm going to attack uh, you, Morgana. Take three. All right. I will pass the turn. Oh. I mean, we're oh, ramping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, nine mana on turn six. Pretty cool. But, uh, like, dead on board? I don't know. Target target for the Relic Conus? Uh, Ryan. Okay, you'll get this uh, Cultivate. Sure. Got a turn. No Gurmag Angler. I don't even have it in my jack. Joke's on you. Disgusting. I'm actually kind of curious, would Talarian Kraken be a relevant include in, like, these very creature light... Talarian Terror? Like, yeah, Talarian Terror. Uh, in, like, these very creature light like, combo spell decks. slingy type yeah. decks that yeah. are combo-oriented, just as a way of, like, saying... You could. You know... I think the better thing to do would just go for something like Falaji Archaeologist and um, and Seagate Oracle. I think those are sufficient. Uh, yeah, you're probably, yeah. You're probably right. They're digging towards your combo while also being, like, speed bumps along the way. That's that's You're been one of my right. arguments for a while now. No. What you got? I bonus? mean, trinket, trinket mage is uh, another good option. Yep. Attempt to tap. Yep. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yep. Okay. Tap again. Activate Gretchen. I'm debated. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I will throw stone cedar. Oh. Oh. Shit. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I pass priority. There is, there is fear this in is my problem. dojo. I will pass priority. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> my dojo is so full, full, so full of fear. Obviously, he doesn't have a way to tap it yet because he doesn't have haste on the field. But it's a good, good card. God, that's terrifying. Good card. Good card is good. <laughs> Anything else, Tonis? Um, no, I'll pass turn. Alrighty. Well, with that, I'll. Take my turn. I am. <laughs> It'd be a shame if there were an Aether Spellbomb target. It would. It would, in fact, be a shame. Because I, I have nothing to help with this. Just <laughs> black green deck doesn't have anything to help with creatures. Uh, you, I used like... my removal, dude. Uh, have more removal. I know. I, I've got plenty of removal in the deck. It's like 18. where's yeah? Where's your Abyssal Gatekeeper? Nah, it's not in the deck. You don't have a visual gatekeeper in the hmm. deck. I know it had to go. It had to go. I'll yeah. play an island. Oh, I feel like a visual gatekeeper is better than the prowler. Yeah, maybe. Because it's one mana, or I think it's one mana. It might be two mana. Just gotta draw more cards. I would like to transmute this drift of phantasms. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are getting the freed, correct? No. Okay. I'm not, not getting the three. He's okay. Capsize. <laughs> capsize is a relevant get here. I will be getting do, 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 do. So he has the infinite green with free. He just needs a way to add blue right now. Glittering frost. That's you 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 transmuted a drift for glittering frost. Yeah, good. Okay. okay. Uh That's so either correct. A either A, he has the freed in his hand. Or B, he's just so starved on mana that he I needs think it's the I think it's mana starve, yeah. It might be the mana starve. You're not you're you're not like you're, you're, I will you're pass. making a good point there. Okay. Uh end of turn, I'm going to go ahead and activate my forest. Look at the top card and reveal if it's land. 
Ah, See, the nice thing about Gretchen is that all mana is card draw. I wonder. It's a land. It's a Rhymewood False. Uh, then I'm going to go to my turn. I'm going to pay one blue, two blue. Uh, three blue. Exile my graveyard. <laughs> Cast the a cruise. treasure cruise. We cruise it. And draw three cards. Uh, I will pass priority. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cruise is fine. Good with me. Puzzle? Yep. All right. Go ahead. Draw my three cards. Honest with the foil cap size, bro. You want to show that off to the chat? Uh, I'm going to play a Mystic Sanctuary. Untapped. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to enter the battlefield. I'm going to target the treasure cruise. Hmm. That's a card you can't loop, I suppose. Uh, how many cards <laughs> in graveyard? One. Okay. I well, pass I'm, well aware, I'm well aware that you can relic my cruise. And if you relic my cruise, you relic my cruise. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds like a thing to do. Yeah. Yep. Relicing my it's cruise. It's not oh. that good, but it's a thing you yeah. can do. Yeah. <laughs> it's better uh, than nothing, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to pay two mana. I'm going to award you, my great friend, Tonis, with this wonderful, wonderful, hey. lignified Gretchen. Let's go. Oh, wait, is it Gretchen or is it uh, I'm lignifying. Hierophant? I'm lignifying Gretchen. So, well, yes, the Hierophant okay. gives him a lot of mana. Yeah. Puzzle Box has the Spell Bomb on the field. He That's can true. collect Spell Bomb okay. to, un to get rid of the Makes sense. Hierophant. And I'm, right now I'm getting rid of his card draw. So right. lignify. Yeah, I'm passing priority. That's fair. Yeah, looks like my 0-4 is going to be a zero four. 4 <laughs> Yep, uh, checks out. And with that... With Target that, Gretchen loses all abilities. Target I will go ahead. <laughs> I will go ahead and pass the turn. I will... Uh, yeah, okay. Pass turn. Hmm. Cool. Um, Swamp. One, two... Three, four. Uh, let's see. We have how much mana? One, two. Let's see. Um, the beautiful comment pod. One, two, three, four. Four. Um, maybe we'll tap like that. Yeah. Uh, to cast. Um, no, we need to do this. Yeah, um, uh, Entourage of Trust. Yeah. Try and gain uh, Le Monarch. Yeah, yeah. Donis, yep. you have priority? Uh, we have nothing to say about that. Yeah, I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Spider I doing know. spider things. Yep. Um, it's, okay. It's just I mean, spinning. you are guaranteed Monarch for the rest of the game. Basically, yeah. Kind of, Kind of <laughs> looks like that, doesn't it? Um, I will go spider attacking at you, Morgana. I am going to take... Are we going to get death by spider commander damage? That would please me. Um, I find that highly unlikely. I feel like quite this deck possible. or I one of these decks is going to win pass first. Turn. Drawing for Monarch. But it would okay. be funny. It would Let's be go. funny. Draw. <laughs> We really did say Simic, huh? Yeah, you guys, you guys uh, <laughs> went full full YOLO on the Simic here. Look, if I'm going to play like top end combo deck of the format, like the shit that's on the game base, okay. I can either pass, play Abnel. Pass. Wow, Taunus with no land drop. Okay. Oh, rough. I can either play Abdel, which is an option. Go ahead, puzzle. And it's probably, it's probably. Yeah, I was thinking if I wanted to do something, it didn't step. Oh, uh, like he bouncing. Was, uh, he was considering cracking the spell bomb. Yeah. I considered being mana efficient. You have a glittering. Wait, man fine. tower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I 
I do have a Glittering Frost. I would like to cast my Glittering Frost. Six cards in hand? Six cards in hand. Okay, okay Puzzle, you kind of just showed your hand. Okay, so that is Glittering Frost. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, you passing priority, Morgana? I'm passing priority. Okay, I'll pass too. Pass as well. E. It's gonna take I will have my Dryad targeting my growth chamber. Mm -hmm. Priority. Pass. Pass. Untap it. Hooray. I'm 99% sure this deck runs Dizzy's Bell. Let me check. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Gotta think again. Big think. You got a thonking? Big thonking. Big thonking. Yeah, big thonk. My thonk is that I will pass. Okay, end of turn. I'm going to go ahead and activate Parcel Beast. Uh, view top. I'm going to put that onto the field. That is a Quandrix campus. Yep. And then I'll go to my turn. Uh, I'm going to play this here island. And I'm going to pay two. I'm going to go ahead and put out a Billy Pala. Oh boy! At Look, least man, it doesn't I have a parcel beast on it. I can't put parcel beast on it. <laughs> correction, you don't have a parcel beast to activate. John, uh, yes. Pod is saying, correction, you don't have a parcel beast to activate. Is that for the Quandrix campus? Judge, <laughs> uh, what's the ruling on this? Uh, Pod, could you clarify what you mean by that? Let's, let's look at parcel beast again and scratch our heads. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, the mute, like, <sighs> either have it be a creature, that's also a land. So is that, then that land should be back in the library shuffled in? Is that what why we're would saying? The land, why would the land be shuffled Correction, in? Correction, you don't have a parcel beast to activate. It's an, its name is forest, I'm pretty sure. If it's a land Just card. The name is forest. Oh, wait. wait, so let's it's, see. You can't activate parcel beast, you activate your land. You activate the ability of your forest. I'm pretty sure that's what Pod's oh, saying. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he's just trolling. Okay, he's, he's being trolling. a little shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I will activate. I will, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Screw you. Uh, yeah, then <laughs> I'll go ahead and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pass my turn. Okay. To Ryan. I have a flyer now. I am... Uh, broken. <laughs> That's why I cast it. Just I have a flyer. You can yeah. take the monarch. I can take the monarch, or he has to <laughs> keep I his. Think his I am going to um, Helipala, huh? Any color? <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, God. Is no he actually way. going to kill my 1-1 one, one flyer that I paid two mana for? <laughs> oh, but you know no it's way. more than that. Um, no way there's a Hierophant in play and he's about to kill this pill. <laughs> okay, I am going to go ahead and cast Overwhelming Remorse targeting the uh, the, Pili the Pilipala. I'm going to respond. Yes. I'm activating my forest. <laughs> Oh, I'm man. going to put that into my hand. I'm going to activate my Arbor Elf, targeting my forest. This yeah. forest. Yep. I'm going to untap my forest. I'm going to pay one, and I'm going to tap my forest, and I'm going to activate my forest. And I'm going to put that into my hand. Jesus. And then I'm going to be kind of annoyed. Exile that shit. Get it out of here. All right. 
My, this overwhelming remorse is looking pretty sad this game. Four mana exile something. Okay, is that it? So, long story short, are, are, I have are a, you all? I have a counter spell in hand. Oh, but he's choosing not to. Okay, cool. Puzzle uh, Box also has a counter spell in hand. Yes. And I cannot commit my counter spell. Well, Puzzle Box has a counter spell in his hand. Sounds I'm not going to. Gonna, okay, I'm not going to counter you countering his removal for your Pili Pala right now. No. But you are going to counter someone interacting with your board stage. So I cannot. <laughs> no, I would never. I, I cannot. He would never. Commit my counter spell right now. Because uh -huh. you. I are, would never stand back my interaction. I am going yeah, to. Yeah, you are the second biggest threat right now. I am going to get to clapping some cheeks. Um, <laughs> I'm going to swing with my entourage of trust at. Uh, let's see how much are we tracking commander damage? You guys got commander damage? I have six. Okay, six. Uh, Entourage of Trust at you, Puzzle, and Skyfisher Spider at you, Morgana. I'll take three. I will not block. Cool. Yeah. Um, I will pay one. Let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 mana, so many mana. Um, also, uh, Ryan, I think that the correct five, decision there five, is not to run stuff two, like Gold Bait. Three, I think the correct four, decision there is to run four. stuff like Viridian Emissary and- uh, Oh, I got it, man. You, you, you or sorry, you, you got, you just gotta go look at the stream. I got oh, it, yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> I also, I also think you wanna be running stuff like Llanowar Elves. We got uh, Persistent yep. Specimen and Moan of the Unhollowed. Um, yep, yep, yep. Here, a favorite of mine, not often finding its way into decks, but here we are. Um, and then I will draw a card for Monarch and pass the turn. Are you running Monfeld Twins? Uh, no, I am not. I like okay. that card. I didn't, I didn't think you were running Monfeld Twins. I think Monfeld Twins has very few decks where it's actually relevant in. Who are we hit? The one, the one deck that comes uh, to mind. You're right. Hitting me. Okay, we're going to go. Um, we're gonna go. Uh, we'll go um, cast down. I have a response. I'd like to crack my spell bomb targeting the hierophant. It's almost kind of like a bummer. Do you want to bounce stretch and tree poke? Nope, that's, not at the that's moment. A tree. That's a tree, Maybe later. My friend. <laughs> Maybe later. I've got enough, and I assume no one else. Why would we want to get rid of your happy little tree? Yeah, big, I'm not. Big tempo do play. About that. Big dirty <laughs> saying. I can't believe this GE is still. This game is still going on. Ghost Spider Commander damage. Yeah, <laughs> come on, baby. Let's go. <laughs> All right, I'm at nine Spider Commander damage. Go I have a creature that? that I can block with. Yeah. <sighs> The upside to Gretchen is I do know that the deck is fairly commander reliant, so this Lignify definitely helps slow down Tonus. Oh, it's not ideal. I'll let you know about that. I know it's not <laughs> ideal. Trust me, you'd have you'd have activated Gretchen four times already if I hadn't done that. Pod Kamorka saying loving the Voltron spider. He knows what's up, dude. You just wait until I get an Opal Palace. I'm gonna be clapping cheeks so hard with the Spidey boy. Eensy weensy spider ain't no eensy no more. It does. It does. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I really wish. I text. really wish Skyfisher Spider could sack itself. That would be. Yeah, nice. that would be insane. That'd be busto. Like then, then you'd have a mana sink. Granted, what? it's not a very relevant mana sink, but hey, destroy all non-land permanents that you don't control is pretty decent. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. What you got, Tonus? Not a lot here. Uh, well, I tap this for blue and a green. And throw the secret door. Uh -huh. Another mana sink! Let's go! Nice, that's the, nice. Uh, that's what you think. Thomas is never ever dying to the spider, basically, is what I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Just, 
Okay, so Tannis has a win condition now, and Tannis has a way to get rid of Gretchen. Jonathan says, that's adding kind of this to the spreadsheet. Thank you, my friend. For those of you that don't know, Jonathan, uh, or sorry, X-R-L-Y-L-Y-L, -L -L is uh, one of the uh, linchpins for uh, maintaining our data gathering efforts. So thank you for that. Thank you for doing that. And Big Dirty says, me too, smiley face, tier one combo breaker. And then Podkamorka saying, missing some Voltron pieces in the list, but still good. <laughs> that's right. Okay, cool. So you all done, Tannis? Um... Yeah, but I have to discard the hand size. Ouch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine Tannis also has a grip full of counter magic. Oh, yeah. Considering he's done very little all game. There's, there's big counter spell well, dick energy the here. The has been doing a lot to the not doing much. Yeah, you have been missing a lot of land drops. Yeah, because he's missing a lot of land drops, I'm assuming he's all gas. Mm -hmm. Either that, or he's a, running a lot of weird he's combos. Tr he's trying not to die by having counter magic up. Okay. Ready. I will go to my turn. That's a funny draw. Alright, let's start with a land for turn. What's it going to be? Tap for two blue and a green. Yep. Uh, target my growth chamber. That's priority. Um. Hmm. Six cards in hand. Um, so you've tapped your growth chamber and then you are tapping the blossom dried to untap it. Yep. Um, sure. Go ahead. Yep. Go for it. All right. Let's use that floating. I'll, I'll break first. I'll cast Freed. All right, so... Uh, okay, this is scary. This is also infinite. Yep, I'm Correct. going to go ahead and commit my solitary piece of interaction. I'm going to Arcane Denial Freed. Or Memory Lapse? Or Memory Lapse, that's right. Memory Lapse. Memory Lapse Freed. Ryan, would you like to respond? I am passing priority. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will pass I'll go ahead. Well. I will go ahead and load a green and cast Unwind, targeting the memory lapse. Oh, yikes. Priority. Taunus, um... Do you have any kill spells, Ryan? Oh. <laughs> Did you pass, Ray? Um, how many if cards you do you have in hand, Taunus? I have seven. I'm going to pass priority. Oh, shit. Um, I will attempt to tap my Laedra to untap my land. Fuzzle, you have priority. Um, hmm. Interesting. Stack. Got some fascinating stack interaction going here. Yep. I will respond. Hmm, well. No, you can have it. Untap. Go for it. Untap. I'm passing priority. Ryan, are you passing priority? I am passing priority. Okay, your land's untapped. Okay. You have priority. Tap for blue and a green. Attempt to re-sculpt his untapper. Um, response, he's my floating green. Tamiya's safekeeping, targeting my untapper. 
Give it hexproof and indestructible. Morgana? Vastwood. Targeting your untapper. Jesus Actually, Christ. Yeah. Finds a Vastwood. Targeting your untapper. Eh? So, what this is going to do I is... pass, I think, right? No, it's a back to puzzle. Yeah. yeah. So it well, goes to... It'll go around, but... Yeah, I'm passing. I it gets around to me. I will... Load a blue... Cast Gush, bouncing these two. Yep. Pass. Yep. I had the vines for the Pili Pala, but again, I, uh -huh. I I made the decision that, like, this isn't... Uh, yep. All right. So, uh... Vines resolves. Yep. Makes it so I can't target my boy. Yep. Um... Tamio gives hexproof, or it doesn't. Tamio and fizzles. And then encounters arcane. Is well. Resculpt fizzles. Fizzle. Yeah, resculpt fizzles. Unwind. I'll untap. Oh, I can float a an extra mana as well here. Float a mm -hmm. green. And then and then free the fizzles. Goes to the grave. Yep. Alrighty, Alrighty, so we have Simic floating. <laughs> Did my best, guys. That's yeah. all I can do. If he gets a that win was, here, I think that was I mean, that was good. I held my interaction. I didn't use it on a fucking Pilly Pala. Let's go ahead and cast my own Hierophant. All right. And if that's good. I will also go ahead and throw out Gretchen. Yep. All right, chat. It's uh, time to take uh, time to put your money on the line. Who thinks going to win now? All right, Matter, my Morgana. Cool. We got the first win attempt out of the way. Yep. <laughs> it had to break at some point. <laughs> yep. I cast. Sculptor of Winter. Mm hmm Or no, this this is untapped. I'm going to go ahead and activate Parcel Beast. Sure. Yep. Going to put that into my hand. So I think you can also right click the, you can also just drag the card off the top so you can see it. Because the way you're doing it, you can all, there's, there's the more cards seen that way. The problem is you guys will also be able to see it and it's not revealed if it's not a link. Mm. We got to help you get your interface set up so you got a little space to um, reveal cards without, without doing that. Actually, if you drag okay. it all the way into the right, you can do it underneath the interface in a way that, so you just drag it like an L, like an L shape over and up and we can't see it. Like if I, as soon as I, as soon as I take it off of my library, it becomes visible. So like, so oh, it's because of this. Yeah. We just got, we just got to get a better system for you to track your stuff. You can also go. Question. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay. No, that's not what I do. I mean, it's not perfectly efficient. I'm going to cast Dragon Drake. Um, how many cards in hand? 3. I'll pass. Yeah, I mean, Donus. Yeah. After that, if you've got it, you've well, got let's it. Well, see. Let's see. Hold on. So there's a, there's a. Well, let's see. Hold on. One sec. I'm not going to pass. Actually, we're going to go. Um... Go for the throat. 
targeting the the uh, Peregrine Drake. Uh, in response to ETB? The, yeah, with the ETB, yeah. Oh, sorry, so we're, we're still waiting for this, right? Yeah. So, yeah, okay, does it, does yeah. it so resolve? E, yeah, res, uh, I'm passing priority, yeah. But you know what I'm doing now. I'm passing, bro. Yep. Okay. And I then got you go for the throat with yep. the ETB on the stack? Yep. All right. It dies. Bless. Papa Bless. Yep, that's I'm right. going to untap one, two, three, four, five lands. Man, so much sandbagged interaction. <laughs> See? I knew Ryan had that as well. <laughs> but, like, I was like, why yes. do it? Why do it when I can make the blue players do it? I Yes, I know Ryan has it. But I also don't trust Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Considering he just passed priority, having it, he just passed priority to, to Tonus. I'm like, is he gonna do it again? I was concerned that you would do it again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and activate my forest. I'm gonna put the snow covered island onto the battlefield. Or not. <sighs> not as cool, too. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pay a green and cast Wild Growth onto my Mystic Sanctuary. Can you hold that one out? Actually, no. Wild Growth onto my Rhymewood Falls, not my Mystic. Got it. Cool. I was going to say, I thought you wanted to bounce that Mystic Sanctuary. <laughs> I'm not actually running any of those. Pass turn. I'm not running to deprive. Uh, it may be... No gush. I uh, will... And you've got how many cards in hand? Yeah, gush. I have two cards in hand. Okay. Um, I will go to my turn gush? and draw. Um, Why doesn't this deck have gush? I will so go to combat. And you know where the spooter's going. Spooter! Oh, oh, oh. He's coming for you, Morgana. And uh, the Entourage of Trest at uh, you, Puzzle. Dang, That's... Morgana. Could have had your four toughness commander out like the rest of us. I'm and just... <laughs> then I think Throw. we're also going to do... Um, we're going to swing these two here at you, Puzzle, as well. And, um, and this specimen at you, Puzzle. I'm throwing Trinket Mage under your commander. Okay. Eh. I will block a 2-2 two -two with Gretchen and a 1-1 or one -one with my Trinket Mage. Okay. And take 6. Yep. Go to damage. This goes in. Um, cool. And then I am going to... Pestilence. Let's see. Pestilence would be pretty good right now. Pestilence wins the game right now. That's not Pestilence. That's Gary. <laughs> Gary's not a problem. Um, we're gonna go. No, that's not Gary. That's Initiative. Rock Tide. Let's go, oh! baby. That's very okay. Rock Tide Gargantua. Okay. Uh, ETV. Yeah. I'm passing. All right, I will choose to exploit, sacrificing the zombie. Trigger. All right, sacrifice trigger on the stack. I'm going to go ahead and attack, untap yep. my forest. Okay. Good to untap. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Good with me. Yeah. I have untapped my forest. I'm going to channel careful cultivation. Yeah. Nice. Had the combo. Yeah, all right. In hand when you went to kill my parcel beasts. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anything else? Decided that uh, this was not a good idea. I'm going to make the elf, and I'm going to be sacking the elf, so I'm just not going to bother making the elf. Okay, cool. Um, and then I, I will pay one, two, away. three, four for Pestilence. Yeah, there's the Pestilence. My kit mage. I'm good with pistols. Yep. 
Game winner right there. Okay. Uh, is it in play? Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, I am going to pay one into Pestilence. Yep. Everyone will take yep. one. I will pay one into Pestilence. Yep. Yep. Nice step, nice. And then I will go to uh, this will die. And I will go to end step and I will draw for Le Monarch passing the turn. You have a 1 1 separately. Yep. Oh, that's right. I uh, forgot about Ooh. the flavor text on that card. Yeah. That is not flavor text. That's why you put the card in the deck. Uh, it is. You're not wrong. <laughs> See, now I know exactly why you put the damn card in the deck. Yeah, it's a good one. Good one. A little faster. Hmm. Oof. This is why I'm really glad I have a forest as my commander. Yeah, that's what chat <laughs> said too. Um, I'll pay four for Gretchen. Gretch. Yep. And then I will pass the turn. End of turn, I'm going to activate my forest. I'm going to put the snow-covered island onto the battlefield. Go to my turn. Chat has no faith. Spooter at a measly 14%. Ye of little faith. And uh, Spider is... Spider very much in the winning position We've here. got Giorgio Dalmaso. Welcome, my friend. Glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us today. I know you can't see my smiling face, but I'm sending you good vibes. Thanks for joining us. I don't know that I've seen you here before. Maybe I have. But uh, regardless, thanks for coming and, and watching the game. Yeah, see, Pod Camorca, he, he knew what was up. I mean, I didn't have faith that I was going to win, and I haven't, so... Yeah, if you didn't know, uh, the whole the whole point Let's of my branding open... here is that we're all connoisseurs of fine common cardboard. Let's open with activating my forest. Yep. And before the forest resolves, I don't want to tap all my green mana for that. So before the forest resolves, I'm going to go ahead and activate my campus. Okay. Hey. Ooh. So I'm going to view the top card. I'm going to put that top card onto the bottom of my library. And then I'm going to resolve my forest activation. Yeah. I'm going to reveal this year Link of an Eye. Mm -hmm. Or no, wait, no, that's not revealed. But it goes in my hand. But oh well, yep. you guys know I have a Blink of an Eye. Cool. Um, I now we I'm can counter Pestilence. Yeah, I'm going to be casting. <laughs> What's that? What are you doing? Are you passing the turn does, mark on it? Okay, does anyone have a counter spell? No. Doing this? Um. Kind of? Uh, and you uh, counter gonna, pestilence not, if it it's gets not bounced. Be able to counter, it's not going to be able to counter pestilence, is it? Yep. Uh, Good talk. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and pass the turn. Really oh damn no! Sad. Yay! Oh. All right. Hey, we get to untap. We did Bye, it. Bye, Giorgio. Uh, see, Giorgio saying, "Start to work. Have a good day." Well, hey, Giorgio, thanks for stopping in briefly to uh, enjoy the chat, and thank you for the like. Much appreciated. Hey, dude. He says, uh, "Start to work. Have a good day, and thanks for all your work, Giorgio." Thank you for showing up. You validate what we're doing here. Um, yeah, yeah, check out the video. This is a big one. We've got the building of Skyfisher Spider and we've got uh, the gameplay afterwards. So I'll make sure to organize those so you can watch it later on. But uh, have a great day at work and we'll catch you on the flip. Okay, I've untapped. Um, I am going Regards, to, man. let's see, gonna go to combat. 
I am going to swing um, Entourage of Trust at Taunus, Spider at you, Morgana, Zombie at you, Puzzle. Um, actually, no, this uh, Zombie will go, yeah, it'll go at, 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 uh, at Puzzle. And, uh, oh, let's see, this is only the thing. Actually, no, this Rot Tide will go at you, Puzzle. And then this zombie will go at you, Taunus. And this and this Sapperling will go at you, Taunus. Yeah. So I got a 4-4, four, four, a 2-2, two, two, and a 1-1? One, one? Uh, yes. Um, um. A block your 2-2, two, two, I guess. Okay. I will not block. Okay. Okay, go to damage. We got three more Spooter on Morgana, and then we're gonna go. Um, Twelve. Twelve Spooter. One, two. Let's see how much. I can activate Pestilence anytime I want. Um, go one, two, three, four. Can't tap that green for Pestilence. One, two, three, four, five, four. Gary! Big boy's here. One, two, three, four, five. Gary for five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven from Pestilence. Uh, oh, rough side. Big Dirty says, good luck, peeps. I gotta go, love the spider deck. Hey, Big Dirty, thanks for joining us today. Glad to have you here and uh, hope you get some good sleep. Jonathan says, right, wait, didn't that zombie die last turn from Pesty? It did. Good point. Thanks for the heads up there. Good correction. Zombie is dead because of pestilence. So no, you just you take it. Have... Oh wait, you're right. You're right. You're right. So, um, so Tanis, you will take uh, two left. Let's see. Well, I blocked uh, that. Sapperling yeah. So the game. block, block the sapperling. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Gary, Tonis, you have priority. Response, to Gary. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, blow up the relic to try and draw a card. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to exile my pretty. Oh, uh, let's see. Do I do I want to get this persistent specimen back? I don't know that I do. Um, doesn't feel like a good use of mana. Uh, nope. This will go. Yep. Sorry about that. Yeah, good catch there, Pod Comorca. That zombie was indeed dead. I'm okay. going to eat my graveyard. So, um, did you get your card? I drew my card. Okay, cool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'll drain you all for seven, and I will gain uh, twenty-one. Hold up, Tonis, are you doing anything? Um, no. Puzzle? Nope. Okay. Yes, we drain for seven. I'm at seven. I go to six. One out of pestilence range. Um, and then I will, uh. I will pass the turn and draw for Monarch. Okay. On top, yeah. Play land number three. Yeah, for those of you checking in right now, maybe you didn't catch the rest of it. Um, the reason Parcel Beast is on a land is because of uh, Aether or the uh, Life Spark Spell Bomb, which turns it into a creature. You morph it or you mutate it onto it, and then it uh, you can choose whether it goes on top or bottom. In this case, they uh, chose to make it into a land. Okay, land from Tanis. Yep. We got uh, the third land. Yeah. We <laughs> took 20 turns. Hey, look, yeah. the Simic deck is outpacing all of the other Simic decks on the table at putting lands on the field. Hmm. You mean the Golgari deck? Actually, I think we have about the same lands. I mean, I basically had two lands bounced. Yeah, we so. have we have the exact same <laughs> number of lands, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing nothing else other than discarding the hand size. Cool. Yeah, uh, the spider is doing really well because one of us missed all of our land drops and had to just hold up interaction, and then the other two of us couldn't really combo off because... 
you know? Because they're getting stared down by blue players? <laughs> yeah. No, okay, so I couldn't combo off because I made the correct yeah, decision. You, you, you did the right to thing. not go for my combo and instead prevent someone else's combo because I knew yep. that they had interaction. What you got, Puzzle? I got a land drop. Um... Basically, that drift play let me like that informed pretty much all of my decision making from then on. And just for that card, that's all I got. Go ahead. All right, uh, end of your turn. I've got a blink of an eye kick targeting pest ones. Hmm. I am going to. How many cards in hand, Morgana? Two. Two. Um. One uh, one island untapped. So, if I pop for, I really can't pop for four. I can pop for three, and keep my board. Uh, I'm going to pay one. Um, let's see. How much do I need to do with this? Actually, though. So if I do one, it's puzzle and Morgana at. Six and five. It needs to be a little bit more than that. We'll go uh, one into pestilence. Yep. 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 And then we'll go two into pestilence. Yep. Yep. And then we'll go um, three into pestilence. Spider dies. A spider is dead. You are correct. And then Pestilence resolved, or that resolved on Pestilence. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw my card. Go to my turn. Chris, you're right. Spooter is working out. Cast a Shrine Steward. to get a gift of paradise oh that's uh morgana's graveyard i think or exile chris why is there a forest in my graveyard there shouldn't be a forest in my graveyard i think i put it in there while i was searching my library uh yeah gift of paradise did you catch it ryan yep uh, right. Oh yeah, so Gift of Paradise off of Shrine Keeper. Yeah. I'm going to cast Gift of Paradise on this here island. Yeah. I'm going to gain three life. I wonder why I cast Gift of Paradise. Or I wonder why I got Gift of Paradise. Play this year island as land for turn. Last turn. Okay. So we're gonna go. Um, um. Yeah, we'll just uh, draw for turn. I think. Uh, I think the play is to. Go ahead and go to combat. I'm going to swing Entourage of Trust and Gary at you, Morgana, and Rot Tide at 
you um broadside at you puzzle i will uh, block yeah i'm going to throw the shrine keeper at the entourage okay go to damage for damage yeah i'll activate gretchen yeah Actually, yeah, you, will. you know what? Yeah, I'm going to activate my forest. Yep, go ahead. I'm going to keep that on top, put it in my hand. I will draw a card and I'm put going to an island into play. Still, yeah, still before, still before uh, damage. Mm -hmm. Trinic search? Uh, sure. Yeah. Draw, draw. This turn. This turn. Untap. 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 Activate my forest. Yep. Put the snow cover forest into play. I should just take the damage here. Actually, I shouldn't block. <gasps> Are we fine with me not blocking or no? Um, I'm fine personally. Sure. Okay. I'm down to one. Oh, the the Chris. To answer your question, that's um, Morgana just has that part of their. Uh, that's how they've clipped their their window capture. So. That, that's yep, why. It, that's it in their graveyard. Yeah, okay. So you're taken down to one? Okay. Um, I will go ahead and pay one, two, three, four for Pestilence. I will attempt to negate said Pestilence. I don't think anybody's going to help me, so we're just going to pitch that into the uh, graveyard. No fucking way. Am I going to help you with that? No way. Absolutely nope. not. Um, Absolutely. I'm going to go one, two for Dusk Legion Zealot, and I will uh, draw a card. Yep. That's Let's the see. thing. Uh, yeah, Dusk. Yep, draw a card. Lose a life. Um, I will cast. Let's see. One. One for uh, village rights, I think, targeting this Dusk Legion Zealot. Yep. Yep. I will draw two. I will play a land. Um, and then I will go to my end step and draw for Monarch and pass. I have a response to end step. Yep. Uh, greed always pays off, kids. Yep. Um, I'll cast Weather the Storm with a storm of four. You. Yeah. That's priority. Yep. Yep. All right, so I'll have five total, so I'll gain 15. <whistles> up to 18. Yikes. Game ain't over yet. I'm just proud I haven't died yet. I'm just glad you didn't just full swing at me. <laughs> so keep in mind, keep in mind, Ryan, we've got we've got every single one of these Simic combo decks keeping each other down. Okay? Yep, that's right. And by we'll every see. single one of, I mostly mean I basically interacted with everything puzzle did. What do you got, Taunus? Anything else? Hey, I bounced oh, a Hierophant a long time ago. You did. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead, Taunus. Okay. Land. And it Land. has yet to reappear. Uh, look, so I basically killed it, really. I've been I've been throwing out interaction. <laughs> I've been presenting win opportunities. And yeah. I have not yeah. gotten any respect. <laughs> Wait, Query and Ranger. Of okay. Of course yep. I don't respect. You stopped my win attempt. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, nope, that's true. Oh, that's unfortunate. Alrighty. 
Oh, God. I'm in a terrible position right now. <laughs> Um, Most of us were, I think. No, 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 no. See, I'm I'm at one life, okay? Yeah, yours is much worse. I was in a worse position, but, you know. Uh, let's see. Three, four, five, six. Cast Gretchen. Yeah. <laughs> this is, in fact, the downside of having my commander be under a land, because uh, I don't get to constantly have a creature that I can use to jump block. Yep. Okay. Um, and I will... You know what? At this point, I'm just going to cast it. A Boro Breeze color. Mm, combo has entered the uh, chat. Combo has, in fact... It is nowhere chat. near a combo. Got I'm it. passing priority on that because yep, this passing. man is in a really shitty spot and he mm -hmm. looks, he's looking for blockers. This is not a combo piece right now in any way, shape, or form. Got it. Is it Maybe. my go? Yep, go ahead, Morgana. Yeah, I'll mm, pass. Okay. Yeah, my Hierophant's exiled and my highest mana value land is three. Can you stop? Behave. Okay. I do not like the unenviable position I have of being the most squishy person on the table. This is not nice. I don't like this. Um. Let's open up by scrying. You know what? I'll keep that on top. I will activate Parcel Beast. One floating. Draw this card. Cast Cloud of Fairies. Mm hmm. Eh? Um. Yeah, that. <laughs> you still need an Archaeomancer, I guess. Mm hmm. But that will go infinite. Yeah. I'm tapped out. I have nothing. So I'm passing. Yep. Thought us passing as well? Yep. Okay. Untap these two. I'm going to have one mana floating. Activate my forest again. That in my hand. And just a quick thank you to everyone who stuck around in chat. Really glad to have you here tonight. If you are enjoying the content and you haven't done so already, click that like button. And if you want to see more of this content, uh, go and hit the subscribe button. And we'd love to have you in chat more often. So thanks for being here. Yeah, streamer possibility. Mm -hmm. Big. Top four. Really shit spot. Grab that one. Move all these to the bottom of my library. Move to combat. Ryan, three coming at you. Okay. Uh, three damage. I'm going to take the monarch. I'm going to one, two, three, four, for a nimble claw adept. Mm hmm. For Monarch. You go, Ryan. All right, we'll go to my turn. Hmm.
One, two, three. Cast, uh, actually we'll go one, two. Cast Guild Sworn Prowler. We're going yep. to cast one, two, four, uh, Reckoner's Bargain. Sacrificing the Guild Sworn Prowler. Mm -hmm. Yep. I will gain uh, two life. And draw two. And I will draw two. Mm -hmm. Not as good as Deadly Dispute, but still pretty damn good. Yeah, we're, we're not yeah. unhappy with it. Debatable. The life can be better, depending on the situation. For you, well, I think two, it'd be better. Three, four, uh, <laughs> four... Vicious Battle Rager. Oh. Initiative has entered the chat. Also functionally unblockable. Yes. Night, pod. Yeah, I was going to say goodbye, Morgan. <laughs> yep. That is, that is basically, I need to get a win on my next turn. So I, I need to go and get a got the mana. swamp, I think. Um... Yep, we'll go get a swamp, and we'll play said swamp. And um, then I will cards in hand, Morgana. Four, four. Um, okay. Um, let's see. You got a big brain this right now because this is kind of spooky, you know? This game is very much not over. Um, I am going to attack with Gary at uh, you, Morgana, and the Entourage and the Rot Tide at Puzzle Box. You've got three cards in hand? Yep. Um,. These two at you, puzzle. So I have a Gary coming at me? You have a Gary coming at you. All right. I'm going to pay a blue. I'm going to cast Cerulean Wisps, targeting my Shrine Keeper. Shrine okay. Sword. Yep. Draw my card. That is a thing. Well, Gary was trying to Okay. I think I have to not block here. Okay. Cool. Um, I will... Yeah, I will then go to my end step and pass turn. Oh my god, chat went crazy here. Um, yep. Jonathan, uh, Pod Kamorka, thank you for sticking around in chat. Love having you here. It was really fun. Tapping out for now. Uh, can't stay awake. Good night, y'all. Well, sign off, my friend. You sleep well, and we'll catch you on the flip. This game has gone to turn 12. Yep. Yeah. Look, man, when every single deck has a bunch of control spells, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't play that many. I do. What you got, Thomas? Also, I think I think we're, we're, we're gonna let's um let's hold off on chatter for now so we can just keep moving through the game. What do you got? I tap Thornwood Falls to gain one necessary life and yep. passing trick. Yeah. Cool. And puzzle. Uh, hold on before you untap. Oh. Um, Go so ahead. you've got how many? I've just got one mana. Just got one mana. Um. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. By the way, Ryan, I can keep the game moving while chattering. Maybe other people weren't able to, but I'm, I'm here. I just want to make sure everybody's got a chance to... You uh, say good to go? Yep, good to go. Go ahead. All right. Um, okay. Well. You have six cards in hand. You can kill any one of your choosing next turn, pretty much. I'm 
you know what? Um, high tide. Morgana? Best priority. Pass. Um, pass. Okay. I put it up here. So you don't forget. Um. <laughs> High Tide works for your island as well, Thomas. I don't have yep. anything on top. Let's tap four. Activate Gretchen. Pass priority. Pass priority. Yep. Pass. Draw a card. Put a land into play. Let's tap this for three. Past. Oh boy. I swear to God, if you have a flood of recollections in hand right now. <laughs> or any other Archaeomancer effect, really. Uh, cast Find the Path, targeting this island. Find the Path. Mm hmm. that good? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, ETB, I venture into the dungeon. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and scry one. Uh, scry that to the bottom. Interesting choices. I will... Tap for two green, adds an extra blue and a green. Activate Gretchen. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm F6. Hmm. So. No land drop. Let's pay two and bounce the island to untap this island. Yep. And then activate Gretchen. Mm -hmm. Draw a card for the land into play. A2. Bounce. Untap this island. Mm -hmm. Yep. Float a green. Activate Gretchen. How much do you have floating? One, One green. green. One green? One green. Have you made your land drop this turn yet? Yeah, he, yeah, he I just did. Have. Um, was that a yes I'm, or a no? Yes, I have. Yes, yes. At okay. the start of my turn, um, I am losing each time. Yeah, he's currently losing one each time. If he gets an Archaeomancer effect, he, he gets needs, high or if he gets a, a way to make the land tap for four. Um, yeah, I mean, he doesn't even need a way to, need a way to make the land. Yeah, tap there's four. not really a way for me to cast that and be oh, able okay. to keep the loop going. If you get, is this a, is this growth. a val is this a value uh, a value yes. attempt? Yes, if you it get, is. I'm if you trying get to find growth. some kind of answer. <laughs> if you get wild growth, you draw um, your entire deck. And you can find a win from there. I'm going to Grasp of Darkness, targeting the Ouroboros Breeze Caller. Sure thing. Good to resolve Gretchen. Yeah. Trigger. Resolve Gretchen. Draw a card yeah, to land into play. If he had, um, if he if he drew a Wild Growth, he uses the Floating Green to put the Wild Growth on the thing. He pays two to untap it with the Breeze Caller. Mm -hmm. And then he goes Mana Neutral. Yep, yep. And from there, yeah. all he needs to do is find I another... still don't really have a good way to win there. I'll cast a, a land on Tapper. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can draw your entire library. Actually, yeah, yeah, no, no, but no, I you wouldn't draw... have any mana to actually You draw win your entire library. Um... Hmm. Okay, so I'm passing on Juniper Order Druid. Yeah, I am too. All right. I'll I don't know what all your turn. deck is running, so I feel yeah. like... Anybody feel doing like anything on instep? Them. Anything from you, Tannis? Nope. Cool. On to you, Morgana. My turn. Play this here is nice. Uh, 
Let's grind. Keep that on. Yeah, no, I look at the board state go, ah, oh, Ryan can probably kill me next turn. Guess I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Arkham's Astrolabe, cool. This will be east. Oh, New Island doesn't tap for two. Let's put this snow cover out. Oh, interesting. Is, is that how high tide works? I've never uh, actually. Yes, that is in fact how high tide works. So it's only and the I lands cannot, that are in play. I cannot oh, well. cast this Juniper Order Druid then. Okay. Because okay. I put a land into play and tapped it. Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven mana. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play this. Uh, that is false. The effect applies even if the island in question entered the battlefield after high tide resolved. Okay. I can, and in fact, play this. A slippery bubble. Then I'm going to activate this guy onto that parcel beast. Actually, uh, do I want to do that? Yeah, I want to do that. Tap this to add two, activate parcel beast. One floating. Two top card. Put it into my hand. And pay another one to uh foretell this mystery card. Mm-hmm. Anything else? All right. Um, on my turn, um, I am going to uh, go into the uh, Undercity, and I'm going to go down to the Forge, buffing Gary up to a 4-4, four, 4-6, four, four, and then I will draw for turn. Um, what am I doing right now? Um, Colony Garden. Making Love a Colony Garden. Really big fan plant. of Colony Garden. Yeah, it's, it's a great, great card in this deck. Uh, plant. I have so many tokens in my little reader thing here. Okay, there we go. Plant token. Um, I will... Oh, I still have the Monarch, don't I? Yep, you draw a card. If you want. I draw um, a card for Monarch. Oh -ho! I there am going to two pay two one... Bucks. Two, three, four, five, six to cast the Spooter. Yep. Priority on Spooter. You got okay. the Spooter. Spooter, I'm going to sacrifice the plant. And I'm going to destroy a non land permanent, which will be um, the. Um, Hmm. Boy, this is tough. Um, the Gretchen, I believe. Uh, or actually, it'll be the Juniper Order Druid. Okay. This will tag that. Um, and then I will go to combat. And I will swing the Vicious Battle Rager at Morgana the Rot Tide Garganta and the Gary at you puzzle uh, and the Entourage at you Taunus. Not all at me. Oh, the secret door is, has a four but not a five. Never mind. Mm -hmm. yep. I thought it had five. Okay, Thomas, what you doing? Um, good question. Um, let's see. I'm gonna just block with my door. Okay. Got it. Puzzle? And puzzle. 
I will block the Gargantua. Okay. We'll take I'm not four. going to block anything. Okay. To, er, before damage. Yeah. Daisy spell. Um. Nice. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of spooky. Um. I I I win the game go. if I uh, if I get to untap with that distance spell. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, end step or uh, second main here. Um, I'm gonna play. That's it. I don't actually know how this deck wins the game. Byrexian just... Rager. Capsize. I will lose a life and draw a card. Okay. And I will play a land. Yeah. Infinite uh, Capsize is a viable win condition did here. Did you play the Colony Garden this turn? No? Uh, I did. Okay. Yeah, my bad. Sorry. You're okay. right. I forgot about that. Um, okay. And then I will... Um, I will pass the turn. Okay. Uh, and yep. maybe maybe I just get lucky. Maybe maybe I'm I'm just super giga lucky and just draw. I think that Quir that Quirion Ranger probably needs to swing it. Oh no, it can't because the Ragworm. Yeah, it's pretty spooky. Yep. Morgana's right on the edge of uh, winning right now. Yep. No, I I recognize this. I'm mm -hmm. in a very good position. Uh, I'm a combo deck. I can just be at one hit point and be like, okay, uh, I win the game. That said, I still color. die. Yeah, I still die to a <laughs> kill spell. So, like, it's. Um, we're gonna pass. How many cards oh, in hand, Tonus? Six. Okay. By the by, I drew that distance spell off of the monarch. Yep. Oh no! The monarch actually saved my life there. Because I mean, no I, way. I I would have had to use my mystery foretell card. All right, let's start with. Oh, oh. no. Uh. <laughs> Merchant scroll. And puzzle, All did right. you take your damage last uh, last swing? Oh, I forgot to take the four. Thank you. Yep, you're all good. Passing Merchant, on Merchant scroll. scroll. Okay, yeah, I'm passing. He's either getting combo piece or interaction for my win. It would be reasonable to assume interaction for my win, but like he's in a really shitty spot in general. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what he's gonna get. And I don't even know, like I don't know how puzzle wins here. Mm -hmm. If I'm in puzzle's position, I'm like, I I I can't win the game anymore. Oh no! I'm uh. one off winning again. <laughs> Oh, oh, do you actually have do you actually have the ability to win in your hand? What? Almost. <laughs> God, this is a fucking crazy game. Do you have Bro. like the prize? Do you have the prize loop in your hand or something? Man, that's that's a shame. <laughs> it's like the prize loop, that's just uh pay pay six mana counter target spell. Yeah, I think it's pay six mana counter target spell with Gretchen on the field. Show me what you've got. Any way you want oh, it. That's the way you win. need it. Any way you want it. So we can't win, so go for interaction, or are you just going to go for the win and just be like, okay, I have the win, guys. You get to choose between killing me and killing Morgana. <laughs> Man, this sucks. Um I think I'm tutoring Arcane Denial. He's tutoring interaction, boy. Let's go. <laughs> He's like, Morgana's gonna win. I need to interact. Yeah. Which is fair. You do kind of need to interact. And then I'll go. Archaeomancer. Yep, there it is. Mm hmm. Well, I feel so, like that's, yeah. I am not getting anything to win. Do yeah. you have Peregrine Drake in hand? Okay, so uh, no, I do not play Peregrine Drake. Okay. The win that I'm, I could I'm have went for was Archaeomancer Snap, 
but I need my lands to tap for more mana. I don't think that this is a, a go. This is just uh, a blocker for some value. But yeah, yeah. no, I, I I'm pretty sure that this is a blocker for some value as well. Okay, I'll pass. Okay. <sighs> ETB, I am going to get. How much mana do I have? Two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. I'm at five. So I'll get Weather the Storm. Pretty good one. Um, so you're targeting Weather the Storm? Yeah, target Weather the Storm in my graveyard. Um, and how many spells have you cast? Uh, this is my second one. Your second one. Um, I'm gonna pay one and cast crop rotation. The crop Man. rotation. <laughs> Let's See, go. I'm so tempted to counter it, but I don't think that's the right play. So I'm gonna I guess sack I'll a just... land. Uh, sack I, a... I die either way. So so I'm gonna sack a uh, oh. mm. swamp Actually, and hold yep, up. sacking a swamp. Um, you know what? Okay. Are so you risking either... it for the biscuit? It's either I counter this, draw counter magic. Is. Yeah. And I know Taunus has something. Yeah, I mean, but, but at the same more, time, you have to know that like tapping out right now while while Morgana is. If I uh, hold, hold on, you hold just up. kill me no matter what, Ryan. Your board kills me. Yeah. So I have to interact with this. So while yes, this might be me being like, oh, there's a guaranteed piece of counter magic, and I want it to be gone. I actually think that in this instance, this is a very good play because. It's going to draw you one card. Which yeah, that's cast. why I tutored. It could get you, or sorry, uh, denial. Base. But uh, okay. uh, it could get you. You know, if you have any other mana, it could get you another piece of counter magic, which you have one mana. So you could get like, arcane denial. Order. Okay. It draws Ryan two cards, so it can draw Ryan into a kill spell. So I actually yep. think that that is. The yeah, the, that's you can why take. I tutored this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the and this was. You can take. So you're that's countering the crop rotation. Correct. Okay. I'm down a land. Double value! And then Arcane Denial. Mm -hmm. Whether the Storm to Hand? Question yep. mark? Yeah, I don't yep. know. Tap this for double green. Cast Weather the Storm with a Storm of four now. So you gain 15. So I'll gain 15 again? Yep. I've gained 30 life off of Weather <laughs> the Storm. Good card. Yep. And that is all that I have. Hey, I guess I uh, go to my turn. Are you good to go to my turn? Um, what's in your graveyard, Morgana? Uh, Dizzy Spell, Shrine Steward, Cerulean Risks, Tumor of Possibility, Blink of an Eye, Frantic Search. Silver Diamond. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I have okay. nothing. I will draw two. Yep, upkeep, I will draw one. So I'm going to open up one, two, you know, let me, let me reorganize these lines so they're nice and pretty. One, two, three, four. Let's cry one. Bottom that. Let's uh, uh, cast this mystery card that's so surprising. I'm going to hold one. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this mystery card that's incredibly surprising. The hold cool. is good? Yep. I'm passing. Yep. I'm going to scry two. Do I just have? I think I just have to dig for the win here. So, I mean, it's either dig for the win or go for interaction. But I don't know. Like, I think I just die. Either way, it doesn't matter if I have interaction. I just die because I'm too scary to be left alive.
Yeah, I just have to go for the win here. Mm, to the bottom. No, to the bottom. Draw two. Yeah, that doesn't work. Let's activate my forests. Actually, give me a moment. Can I? Do I have something that does that? Do I have something that gets me there? Cards in hand, Morgana? Right now... Six. Six. Yep. Looking to see if I have any outs. So I don't think that works, does it? No, no, it doesn't. I mean, it's 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 a good value play, but it doesn't actually like get me out of the spot that I'm in. I don't think any of the creatures do either, so none of the creatures matter. Yeah, no. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Do 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 do. do. Uh, does any of this do anything for me? I don't think so. Because I've already burned one of them. So... Yeah, like, if I had you still... If I had you in hand still, I have an out. It's not an out that wins me the game, but it's an out that... Helps. It's an out that helps, but it's not an out that wins me the game, which is a problem. Um, Don't I know it. <laughs> I'm going to add a total of three, and I'm going to open up. Let's get the counter magic started. I'm going to cast the shielding plaques on top of my ragworm. Uh, shielding plaques. Um, Expert, right? Yep. Uh, sh wait, yeah, it's hexproof. Yeah, I bet that's what the updated text is. Hexproof. Um, hmm, this is kind of spooky. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna force the interaction now. We're gonna go defile, targeting the ragworm. Dispel. Yeah, Jonathan, no way I was getting through that. I hate to say it. <laughs> um, Taunus? Oh. I don't know whether this is bait or not, but it just it just seems like, you know, if this resolves, then, then potentially it... How much mana do you have open, Morgana? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you untap. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll tap for a blue and a green and echoing truth here, Worm. Yeah. 
I think I just have to counter that. Oh, this is too many of any color, so. Yeah, add two blue, cast special shield. I pass. Target, yeah, target your echoing truth. Tonus? What is it? I'm trying to get it to load. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's counter spell right now. It's counter target spell uh, for the highest CMC permanent they have. So it's it's uh, four right now. And there's there's honestly just far too many different permanents of different varying CMCs that you're, you're yeah, not going to be able to remove them all. Yeah, it's going to be a minimum of three. So just treating it as counter target spell. Yeah. So do you have another piece of interaction? Um... Trying to decide, we're still going to be able to go off if we cancel this? I'm going to be honest, I don't even know if I can go off. Um, I don't have to win in hand. He's got a lot of mana tapped. A lot of mana tapped, but there's still how much left? So I've got one, two, two three, four, five, yeah, six. And then I can six untap, mana. I can end so six mana total. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, Hexproof lands, it draws a card. Then with the untap, if they go freed. Um, no, I don't need freed. No freed. freed it's it's on the it's stapled on the creature. Um, I don't really I, I don't understand the deck well enough to know exactly what Like what the win is at this point. Um, What's the creature called again, Morgana? Simic Ragworm. Simic Ragworm. Blue untap the creature. Oh, okay. So that leads to a. Oh, you need me to tap it. I need knack. Yeah. So if your counter spells something that counters a one mana instant, we should still be fine if this resolves. Yeah, I guess we could allow this to resolve and then wait for the thing that's the win condition. Yeah. yeah. Unless so... you have to directly remove the creature. Oh, that's true. So if it's banishing Knack, then Knack for knack for cloud of fairies is infinite right yes okay that's yeah so that's the that's the concerning thing so i think you do need to well let's see but then but banishing that can be countered too so yeah maybe we just just uh allow this to resolve then i don't know plax good yeah okay plax is good stack resolves yep all right plax etb throw a card Conjurer to untap Parcel Beast, Gift of Paradise. Mm hmm. Activate Parcel Beast. Mm hmm. Parcel Beast not being a creature makes this really weird, huh? Yeah, it does. This is the most unusual <laughs> board state. Let's play and crack a fetch. Okay. Yeah. No opposition agent. Get the snow-covered island. Yeah, this particular board state is pretty strange. Pass the turn. Okay. Draw for Monarch. I will go to my turn. Um, I am going to go um, to the trap. And I'm going to... Boy, it feels like the, like the, the smooth brain route would be to just trap you, Morgana. Um, 
I mean, if I don't have the interaction for your battle rager, I'm dead either way. Yeah, right. But if you do, then then that's concerning. I'm gonna trap you, Morgana. Yep, I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We're done gonna... trying to think this stuff yeah, through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I was just like, to... did not in fact have the interaction. Uh, I, I basically had to go for the win that turn. Yeah. But um, even if you don't, like, even if you even if you counter the plaques there, um, I banishing knack target bogle. I bogle bounce. Like, if I draw the banishing knack there, I'm gonna off play of um, partial beast. I still win. Caustic caterpillar. Um, right. I'm going to play. Oh, and I get the Monarch as well. Yeah, you do. Um, I'm going to play one, two, three. Yeah, three, four, Farhaven Elf. And I'm going to search for a forest. Put it into play tapped. Um... I am going to, let's see, go to combat and swing, let's see, Tonis, how many cards in hand? Uh, five. Five cards in hand, man, that's so fucking scary. Um, So if there's like an RKO snap, that would be bad. Um, all of this at uh, at you puzzle. Five, six, 10, 14, 17, 18, 19. Oh, it's 19 damage. Oh, shit. Um, here, okay, sorry. Changing my plan. I'm going to send it to <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even do the math. My brain's a little smooth right now. I'm going to swing all of this at you, Taunus. And... What, you've got enough to get me even if I block? Uh, the most you can block is 5, which puts damage to 14. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep, nothing I got for that. All right. Um, and then I will uh, play a land for turn. This land was from my Farhaven Elf. Um, and I will cast a... Uh, let's see, let me think about this. So I can go this to scry one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is go one, two, three, four to scry with this uh, Witherbloom campus. All right. Um, I will bottom that. And then I will draw for Le Monarche. Um, and you can go ahead. All right. One card right here. It's going to be a tough card. It is not. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, do I have any sort of out here? Let's see. Play a land. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cast Gretchen. Yep. Activate Gretchen. Uh, yeah. Draw a card. Put a Mystic Sanctuary into play. Targeting? Mystic Sanctuary. 
Legendary ETB. Um, target Merchant Scroll. Um, how much mana do you have right now? Just, just, uh, None. just that one. Oh, I guess the one. All right, I'm gonna pay one for Rotten Reunion. Um, yeah. Targeting the, um, the Merchant Scroll. Yep. I will play Stream of Thought. If this was instant speed, it would be a good card. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, um, who are you milling? I'll mill myself and have... Do I get to no respond target. to the things that you shuffle? I am not oh, shuffling. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, well, actually, I'll shuffle your Rotten Reunion. Um, and so you're milling... Oh, wait. So I'll target myself for mill. You, your graveyard, you get to shuffle. Oh, it's only mine. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, never mind. Well, that sucks. I will mill four. Okay, mill four. Good. Cool. All right. Milling. Negate. Land. Moments piece. Market festival. Okay. Got it. I will pass. Four. So assuming this gets blocked and this gets blocked. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, fourteen. Um, okay. Um, fourteen is not twenty. Um, it does require losing everything, though. Maybe what I'll do is just Rotten Reunion, your moments piece. Okay, good hit. And then moments. I will go to my turn, and I will uh, draw off of the Undercity, and then draw for turn. One more chance, Jonathan. One, two, One or... Uh, for Steve, Steve has entered yeah. the chat. I will sacrifice Steve. Yeah. I'm gonna go find a swamp. Wait, did I just, did I just get that? Or did I just, no, I didn't. Swamp, there we go. Shuffle, that comes into play tapped. Um, I will then cast uh, Elvish Visionary. Yep. And I will. Uh, Jonathan, I've been really off and on for. Uh, you can take, keep going. I've yeah. I'm tapped out. Just do your thing. One, I'm really two. off and on on stream thought, stream of thought. I keep on taking it out, and then putting it back in. But I think I'm gonna end up having it grow not from in the my ashes. List. Yep. We're gonna want a swamp and a forest. I, I think this deck has enough ways to win without stream of thought. And I think it being sorcery speed is too painful. I will go to combat and swing with the team. All of it. Sure. Unga bunga. So you block Rot Tide and some four power creature? Um, or I guess just Rot Tide, right? I will just block Rot Tide with Gretchen. With Gretchen. So four, uh, eight, nine, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you have to block something else. Oh, do I? Mm hmm. Six, seven, One, two, ten, three, four, five, eleven, six, seven, twelve. Eight, nine. Yep, that's twenty. So you do have to block with the Archaeomancer. Wait, four, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, twenty, six, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, twenty. Uh, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Okay, I'll block the Caustic Caterpillar with Archaeomancer. Um. Okay. Uh. Before damage, I will. Which land makes more mana? Or which... um. It's the same. 
I'm gonna pay two and before this, damage. This one taps um, for three. This one taps for two. Caterpillar, your um, glittering thing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Go to damage. You go to. Yep. I'll go to one. One. All and right. And will die. Yep. And I will. I guess I also could have. Instead of playing my grow from the ashes, I could have also scryed here. Um, I will go to my end step and draw for Monarch. And yep. um, I am going to, before turn, I'm going to yep. pay four life and cast Snuff Out, targeting your yep. Archaeo Master. You got it. That was a hell of a top deck, Jesus Christ. Good game. That's it? Oh my god, yep. the Spooter. Spooter! If I, Let's fucking go! Uh, oh. Jonathan, I play... Uh, I play... Wow. Impulsive Research in my list, so I don't rely solely on cap size. I can draw everybody else out. Holy shit. What yeah, a good game. stuff. I am gonna capture that as a screenshot. That was nuts. Um, turn 15. Ooh. Damn. Turn, uh, turn 16. 16. 16, I would have died, I guess. So, 16 for statistics. Wow, 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 wow. Well, first and foremost, good game, everyone. That was insane. Uh, that was turn... Uh, uh, I have 15 here, you said 16? Yeah, 16, okay, 16. is when I would have died. I conceded okay. on 15, but... Yep. Um, yeah, turn 16. Well, uh, I'm going to take a moment here. For everyone who's still in chat, assuming you are in different time zones than me, it's 11 o'clock. So I just want to express such utmost gratitude for everyone who stuck around, watched this crazy fucking game, triple Simic, uh, everyone with green at the table, some of the gnarliest stack interactions. Uh, this was crazy. And I fully had conceded that I was going to lose this game at the beginning. So just goes to show that some wild ass shit some wild ass <laughs> shit and uh Taunus and puzzle box morgana thank you all for joining me and uh playing in today's live stream so Taunus, you've got hierophant oh my god look at all these cards yeah it's like that hierophant's gonna win the game here soon so here's the, how many of these cards were in your opening hand um for these the galvanic the shrine steward wow and then the wild First two lands man that is brutal yeah you got really punished by like unfair unfair draws or not not hitting lands yeah that i could have won the turn you went for pestilence if the pestilence didn't land i was sad i was very but... careful about deploying that pestilence because i knew that it was going to be really crucial to gaining a foothold um yeah yeah it is the I, card that wins games <laughs> I, had to, I had to bait quite a bit to find an opening, um, you know, like try and have somebody combo off, sandbag my interaction really hard, let everybody else spend their counter spells on it and then get in if I needed to, so that I could have that opening for Pestilence and it ended up working out. So that was advantageous, but uh, yeah, good stuff y'all. Um, yeah, well, it, you know, for those of you who are still here, thank you so much for, for sticking around and uh, we will catch you on the flip side. Uh, the next stream will be on Monday. We're going to be working on the Iconoclast, Third Path Iconoclast. Is it something? Not exactly sure what we're going to do with it yet, but it's going to be awesome. And um, yeah, hope you all have a great night and uh, or a great day, depending on where you're at. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you all on the flip. Connoisseur is a fine common cardboard. Peace.